um, when I'm asking someone, do you want, like, is there a specific champion you want to focus on? That's mainly so I can go through the process that I go through with the people that I work with. Um, the process is what matters. The process is what I'm hoping you're going to learn from. So in this case, for example, um, you know, let's say you want to work on uh, Oriana or Swain, right? These are your most played champions. Um, the reason being, I want you to be able to, if say, three weeks from now or even three years from now, you want to pick up Victor or a completely different midliner that you don't know how to approach, that you have an idea of how um, you can set the standard of what are great mechanics. Because I believe that you should aim for what excellence is, right? You should aim for the best in the world. So for example, any skill you pick up, yes, you can... Uh, aim lower and then go higher. However, in League, I think that the best way to learn is to look at the best players in the world currently and then aim towards that. And you can just, you know, as you're learning, make it easier on yourself. So, for example, if the best player in the world gets 10 auto attacks in, in a Jace combo, you can just say, I'll do 5 instead. But you're aware that 10 is the maximum, and you aim the goal to be 10. Does that make sense? That makes uh, perfect sense, yeah. So that's why when I go through this process, it's really important. Because a lot of people will look at, for example, like, uh, they'll be like, oh, I want to watch a high elo Kaisa player. And they look at a 500, like a 500 LP or a master tier Kaisa player. And yeah, obviously, that Kaisa player is going to be better than what you are. But why aim at being as good as a 500 LP Kaisa player when you could look at... Um, in this case, Gala play Kaisa, which is quite literally the best Kaisa player in the world. And I can prove that to you because his win rate is absolutely disgusting on the champion, right? And I'm just... This is, for me, the standard I want to set. Um, right, let me just go all and show you statistics. Uh, I'm screen sharing, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. You can hop on screen share. Like, this guy has a really disgusting win rate on Kaisa, given how many games he's played. I would even say in Season 12, I think he had, like... 100% win rate or something ridiculous. It was close to 24 KDA, 9 games. Like, in competitive play, he had a 24 KDA on a champion over 9 games, even in games where he doesn't win. His Kai'Sa is ridiculously good. And my point is, why not aim to be as good as this guy? And I know that you won't be. Neither will I. I'm not going to be as good as this guy. But having him as a baseline is going to help you aim to be the best much better than, say, you know, I watch a master tier Kai'Sa one trick or even a challenger Kai'Sa one trick. Now, obviously... You just set the bar as high as they come, right? So, for example, I was someone that we used to play Rengar, and I would watch a high MMR Rengar players, and Scrub Noob's a great example of great Rengar mechanics, but he doesn't even play uh, Rengar top lane. So it's hard for me to watch a Rengar top player. So what you do is you go lower and lower, right? You go, like, watch a challenger Rengar player or master Rengar players, and you innovate based on what they are showing you as a basis, and then you'll have to innovate to go further than them. But in your case, right, I just want to, you know, really pin, like, really work on the fact that you're on the idea that you're trying to gather the standard that you want to set to be as high as possible does that make sense yeah so sure. with this do you have um any champion that currently uh, interests you that you want to pick up so currently want to pick up um i mean that's a hard decision uh i try to play meta which i know always isn't the case uh, I, I know Pantheon mid's really good right now. I have no idea how to play him mid lane. Okay. Uh, okay. But I know that he's really strong. Pantheon mid. I you know Korea. So the this is the first thing you can do. The next thing you can do is, for example, um, like this is the first thing you can do and just watch um, like ideally Challenger Korea. Um. So honestly, the way it works for most mechanics, uh, Challenger Korea and Challenger China will, generally speaking, have really, really good mechanics. Um, I haven't watched a single VOD of Challenger Korean players that made me go like, wow, their mechanics are bad. Having played on both servers myself, I can I can pretty much confirm you that their mechanics are really good. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, if you're watching a Korean Challenger VOD, like the mechanics part will be good, but that's what you're watching for, okay? So I'm just specifying here, like when you watch Challenger Korea VODs, don't tunnel vision on the decision making just watch for the mechanics and then obviously 
um, you know, you want to watch a player like Faker play Pantheon. He hasn't changed since last year. It's been 11 months ago, but the things that he's trying, the, the, the concepts that he's applying are going to be the same. The mechanics of Pantheon haven't changed. So, for example, when to use W, when to Q, like, stuff like this, right? Like, the way this little red bar underneath his skills, the five marks, like, the way he uses those is really, really, like, basically, uh, that hasn't changed. Right, so obviously in certain matchups that's going to change, but it's something to think about. Obviously, you have Nemesis playing a lot of Pantheon mid. Uh, he's a really good player. Um, if you want to use Nemesis as an example, um, he even has POV vods here, as you can see. Try not to watch the highlights too much, so this is why it can be a bit annoying. Uh, using thingy is good. Um, obviously, uh, highlight clips are fun to watch, and it's good to watch them because you'll see things happening. But try to focus on getting actual gameplay vods and see the trades. Right. So as usual, I'm gonna go through this, and I just use my arrow keys to go through a vault. I see health bars getting like health bars disappearing. I go back and check how the hell did that happen. Here we go. We see him W auto and then leave. Right. So getting straight into Pantheon, um, it seems like he's not really fishing for a W. Um, 100 health to 100 health. He's waiting for someone to harass him, and then he steps in. So, he's just CSing creeps. He's holding his ground. I'm gonna pull out Epic Pen, because why not? Let's get in the habit of using it. So, anyway, like, he's he's basically not moved from this point. Uh, he's standing on top of his range creeps, and he's not moving an inch past or behind them. Um, why is this relevant? It's because he's just holding his space, and he's not running into your opponent. So, notice that if he stuns Ari here, the distance that he's going to have to walk Right? You can draw it again. The distance that he's going to have to walk from here back to his tower is much shorter than if he's trying to fish for a W on Ari here. And that basically means you're going to get take less minion damage. Because you're obviously going to take minion damage when you trade with your opponent. That's just how it works. Um, right now, you see he's taking minion damage. Two, ro two rotations of minion damage. And he's out. Right? So, something to keep in mind when you're playing a melee champion like Pantheon that can dash in and fight um, level 1 already with W. Because a lot of Pantheon players will do that. Um... You're going to take minion damage when you trade, so avoiding Wing into someone's whole wave and taking like three or four rotations of minion autos is going to save you a lot of HP. Next thing, pay attention here how... Um, I just want to go back here. Um, this is the second trade. I wanted to go back here. Notice how he's baiting out uh, Harass. He walks up, acts as if he's going to last hit the creep, but then leaves as soon as the Ari casts the spell. Something to keep in mind, a super, super valuable skill as a melee uh, mid laner is baiting out pokes. You drop one CS in order to get her to push faster, which means kind of messing up her wave management, and you open up an opportunity to trade on her because now her spell is on cooldown. So really well played, super good micro, very basic thing to do, but obviously uh, watching the GOAT do it in real time is always going to, you know, always something we can appreciate, you know. These are the small things that um, make melee mid lane a little bit more complicated than ranged because uh, you have to, you know, bait out responses early game from, from your opponent in order to gain uh, ground on them. So, just really well played. Super well done. You see, he does it again right here. Um, Ari doesn't take the bait this time, but just, I want you to appreciate this idea. You'll notice this creep is getting low, right? And he steps up and steps back, right? He doesn't actually go for the CS, decides to drop it, doesn't want to take free harass because he wants to open up Ari's health pool, basically, um, to harass. Now, he does this weird thing where he queues. This is actually really bad. He shouldn't do that on Pantheon. Um, he doesn't really do damage if you throw your charged Q through the wave, and then you go on full cooldown with Q, plus you, you waste your stacks. So, not something I recommend, but otherwise, you know, masterfully played laning phase, early game. And you notice how Ari is, like, she is the one hesitating to CS, hesitating to pressure. And if you can reach this point as a melee mid laner versus a ranged mid laner, you're in a really good spot. So... Uh, honestly, I think the level 1 to 2 was really well played, and then, you know, the, the laning phase, there's a really big creep wave, you notice how he's still not playing hyper-aggressive, he's really just, he's he's just responding to what Ari does, and as soon as Ari calmed down and stopped really fishing for pressure, so did he. Alright. Very good. Full combo, and again, uh, something really good to always watch is to, um watch how people do their combo and mimic them, right? So W, auto, Q cancel. So he cancels his uh he cancels the um Pantheon W auto attack and powered auto into a Q and then instantly cancels Q into E, full charges E, and then hits him with the shield slam and runs, right? Uh pretty simple combo. I'm guessing a Q flash is coming here. Um 
Yeah, I actually don't know if that's going to kill. Oh, it does kill her. Nice, awesome sauce. So really well played kill. Let's do an instant replay real quick. Because again, I want you, when you watch these VODs, to actually mimic these. So right now, if you want to, right? For example, for me, if I already know general ideas of a champion, I just want to see how people kill champions. Why? Ultimately, that's how you get advantages, right? Like you're playing Jace, you're playing Pantheon, you're playing even Orianna, the way your champion works, right? The mechanics of a champion are super relevant. Why? Because at the end of the day, in solo queue, if you want to climb, you're going to have to beat your opponent. And dealing damage is the best way to beat your opponent. So, instant replay, we watch the mechanics, and I always recommend to practice this in practice tool, which is what we're going to do next, right? I'm going to hop into a practice tool and practice these. You can do it at the same time. I'm just doing it to show uh, the stream chat as well as yourself what I mean by this. And you really practice the speed at which you do it. Okay. Now, again, I can talk about wave management and things like this, about why he's doing that. And if you can pick these things up as you're watching, that's obviously extra information, but this is not the purpose of the initial VOD review. Okay. So when I initially pick up a champion or work on a champion that I'm currently good at, I don't spend my time focusing on laning phase mechanics unless, you know, it's like obvious things or it's super interesting, right? So in this case, nothing really special. He lets the wave crash after getting a solo kill. He doesn't try to freeze it. He's going to you know, he's going to, based on the fact that this wave is coming, he's going to catch this wave and then he's going to recall. Either he's going to recall here or on this wave, this neutral wave, which is what I think I would do. I would just base here. He has a lot of gold to spend. Obviously, he has two kills instead of one. But uh, he's confident that he can push one more wave and goes ahead and does that. Why not? Either way, that's just wave management. Um, something that's obviously really important. And since you tell me, um, you told me, sorry, uh, before we started that um you know decision making and being like mechanics aren't your issue basically right uh i don't think so but i mean i guess we'll find i'll out judge for that i'll judge for myself yeah. but that's what you told me and um that's why i'm going to you know work on your laning phase more however again i want to go through this process because this is how you guarantee that when you play versus the best in the world your mechanics are really good right so like i mentioned when you're playing melee versus mid you have to bait out your opponent's skills steps in step sideways dodges the charm, and then he's going to murder her. Probably like, very good chance he sets himself up for a solo kill here. Um, obviously masterfully played, holds his Q. A really big thing when you're playing melee champions or any champion, even when you're range versus, like range versus range, if you're on top of someone and you can kill them with auto attacks, do not use your spell. Hold it. So you notice his Q came off cooldown during this all-in. Pay attention to the Q cooldown here. He does not use his Q. He goes for an auto attack first. So his auto attack got cancelled because Ari flushed, but notice that he was just auto attacking. He didn't mash Q. Why? Because he knows he, she still has flash, saves his spell, uses it to catch up. Boom. Simple as that. You don't have to use spells on people that are on top of you. You know, again, a wave management thing he's choosing here. He, this is exactly what I meant earlier with the recall. He decides to base on the freeze here because he has enough gold for the base. He thinks crashing the wave isn't going to change his base, for example. Or he just wants to make sure that, um, basically, if he, if he starts pushing this wave without flash, if we go back here, let's say he starts pushing this wave without flash, he's worried... Um, you know, maybe Olaf comes, shows up and solo kills him, etc, etc, right? Let's say Olaf comes behind here. As we're using all our spells on the wave, that might get us killed, it might not. The point is, um, these are the things you want to think of. He just decided to base on a freeze. He's going to come in back and catch it. Now he's going to be six. And I'm, I'm assuming that he's going to start looking for ults. Now in this case, you know, he hits level six and as soon, as soon, actually, as soon as he's finished catching the wave, he's going to look for an ult. So, uh, in this case, he was a little late um in ulting down but he was probably just assessing the situation as he was farming on whether he should or shouldn't ult. came to the conclusion he should participated in the fight and this is pantheon's biggest strength right so already boom we have a much better idea of how to play pantheon mid i hope right so i want to just recap what you need to do the first thing is wait for your opponent to come to you do not just willy-nilly sprint into your opponent and yeah he got first blood this game but he didn't spend the money it didn't change anything in terms of his matchup uh, just to give you an idea. But you notice how he's playing the level 1. I just want to refresh this for you. Um, he's really focused on waiting until Ari comes to him. And then he responds to Ari's harass. Now obviously this is Ari. Some matchups you're going to have way longer range champions. And you might want to opt into Doran Shield for example. Instead of Corrupting Potion. Corrupting Potion is great against champions that are going to trade with you. So in this case uh, Ari is going to trade with you. So it makes sense to go Corrupting. Because she's short enough range that you can get in W and W her and trade equal health. And that's adv advantageous for Pantheon because of a concept I call Jousting. Um, I, I didn't call it Jousting. My friend Shaves did. I copied it from him. But I thought it was a very uh, adept way to put it. And basically the idea is Pantheon is going to deal his burst damage before his opponent. Right. Fizz is a, usually the example is you can't deal damage to Fizz before he deals damage to you. 
And that's kind of the same with Pantheon. Is it's very hard to deal damage to Pantheon before he deals damage to you. So he's very good at jousting. He jumps in. If you're both 20% health, Pantheon's going to get his damage off before you are. That's the concept of jousting. Okay? So some matchups, um, once you reach a certain health threshold, even if they're 10% health, they're going to one-shot you before you can even react or you can counterplay, right? This is the idea of jousting. So Pantheon is fantastic at jousting. Why? Um, his damage comes in pretty much instantly. You'll see again when we see his burst combo here for the solo kill. You'll see his, his burst damage is pretty much instant, right? Yeah. Ari literally can't like the only reply she has is to cancel his W, and that's the only way to stop Pantheon's burst combo is to cancel his dash. But once he's on top of you, this entire burst combo is pretty much no counterplay because uh, even during his E, most champions can't dash behind him and start hitting him as he's casting E. So again, all of his damage will register before your damage even has a chance to register on him. In other words, he's very good at jousting. You can call it what you want. Just something to think about. Very good. Anyway. Now, what I usually do is already, like, okay, Pantheon has pretty simple mechanics, in my opinion, at least. So, for me, um, this is already good enough in order to hop into a game and practice some of his mechanics, which is what I'll do. I recommend you join me, so, you know, hop on on your league client, practice some of your Pantheon mechanics. Um, I know they're not extremely difficult or complicated, but um, getting familiar with your champion is never a bad thing, right? I'm sure right now, if you play a champion that you play a lot, like Swain and Orianna, you have way more familiarity with the champion. You, you play much more comfortably with the mechanics. Um, and that's why a lot of people generally consider, um, you know, focusing your champion pool on a small champion pool to be advantageous, because that is something that, you know, comfort is king. Especially in solo queue, you know, you're not not playing competitive play it's not always about every draft advantage you can get so i'm going to hop into this game here practice some of the pantheon mechanics ideally and this is actually very specific to champions um this is very specific to um attack speed but try to use the same amount of attack speed as you would in a game so if you're someone that takes alacrity continue to practice like, practice your combos with alacrity if you're someone that takes attack speed rune on the champion play with the attack speed rune in your co combo practice it does make a difference okay um, attack speed will change your mechanics. Either way, you know, I'm pretty comfortable on this bad boy. Um, so I've played him a lot. Pretty simple, nothing special, but it's a combo you want to learn 100%, right? This is the standard damage combo for Pantheon. It is, um, you know, walks up, W, auto, Q, E, and that's it, right? Very simple, but you're going to want to be as smooth as this. Uh, you're really going to want to make sure you get all that damage down uh, instantly, basically. And whether you reapply, you reactivate W or not, depends on the situation, right? So let me turn the CDR off because I queued twice there and that was not the point. Um, but either way, you can practice it without the um, bonus from your passive as well. Just make sure that you're really smooth. EW, auto, into a Q, and then press E. And then you can reactivate the shield slam to get the maximum damage. Or you can let it rip and then press it again. Or just let it go. Either way, it's really important that you practice this combo because this is your bread and butter. butter. Every time you PvP with a champion that's within kill range for you, this is how you're going to kill them. Alright? Are you there? Yep. Awesome. Yep. So this is really important. Um, just something you have to practice when you play Pantheon. Uh, the next thing, Q Flash. Right? Very simple, but again, very effective. You saw him use Q Flash Ignite in order to set up a kill on a Challenger midliner. He was not ready for it. Or if he was, it's still... It's a gamble, right? Do you want to use your Flash to dodge Pantheon's Q Flash if you don't know when it's coming? I can just wind up Q and let it rip, and then you might flash air. Uh, that's why being able to be ready with Q Flash and having the mechanic in your pocket can be really meaningful. It obviously also extends your range. So, uh, again, definitely something you want to consider. Obviously, I don't reach him right now, but... With Q Flash, I can reach him much, much further. Uh, can really come in handy to surprise people. If you even have, um, you know, if you're confident with the cast time, you could even uh, delay your Flash a little bit and get the um, super um, slick Q Flash. Basically, looks like you're not going to Flash, but you're waiting until the very last second to Flash. So um, that's where you look at the cast timer down there, and then you Flash at the end of the cast time. So you notice how I'm not Flashing at the start of it, I'm Flashing at the end of it. Right? This is this applies to any champion with a cast up or wind up for for Q flashing, but you can also Q flash at the start of it. Uh, that works too. I just if you wait a little bit, you can surprise people much more. Awesome. Uh, next up, when you're in melee range of someone, auto W auto Q. You know, very standard. Even when you don't have the stacks, I'm going to drop the stacks here just to show you. But you auto W uh, auto. 
Now, when you have the empowered auto, uh, it actually is an auto reset. When you don't have the empowered auto, it is not an auto reset. So just something to keep in mind when you have empowered W and you've uh, ulted on top of someone's head in their melee range of you or someone's face checking you in a bush, right? So let's say someone's coming into the bush to pick a fight with me. I can auto W and then cancel auto into the normal combo just to squeeze in an extra auto attack, get some extra damage. It can make a difference. Again, you want to be ready to do these things. Uh, you don't want to be put in a position where you don't get the kill. Obviously, Pantheon's ult doesn't have any particular tricks other than you can use it to escape. Uh, I would say I don't I don't know of any Pantheon tricks that are crazy. However, um, aim for the you don't have to aim for the spear damage always. Uh, aiming for the um, the big part, the I guess I don't know what it's called, the um, magic damage part of it. So the big AOE is often plenty. Obviously, if you can hit the spear, that's great. But don't tunnel vision on it. Sometimes just ulting behind someone is going to be plenty. Um, I've I've seen Pantheon players miss kills because of this. But the magic damage part is also very relevant. Obviously, if you can hit the spear part as well, that deals mega damage. But something to note. Another thing is, a lot of people don't do this on Pantheon, but you can just ult your own lane. If someone's hitting plates, I can just ult on his head and kill him. Uh, works very well. Uh, in case you're wondering why I know this, uh, in LEC, I was playing versus Wukong. I was red side, actually, and Wukong hit my tower, and I ulted on his head and killed him. It was armor. Um, I was playing versus Mad Lions, and I ulted right like this. And uh, yeah, if you don't think about it, you can use his um, ultimate as a TP, especially if you're top laning, because sometimes running somewhere can lose you two to three plates, and Pantheon is not a champion that does well when he falls behind. Next up, uh, Pantheon's power curve, which is super important to remember, is actually, if we're going to go, um, where is thingy here? Pantheon's power curve, and I can show this with statistics, is he's a strong early game champion that falls off mid game and then scales back up late game. What does this mean? This means that when you do fall behind on Pantheon, you don't um have the luxury to farm um i'm gonna try and find a graph that shows this uh there is a little bit that helps him um understand this here you go win rate versus game length so as you can see is uh his win rate's really high early game when people ff then his his, his, his basically is like if his early game goes great so before 15 to 20 minutes people ff against him he does really good so 54 is quite high then he starts dipping, going into 20 to 25, in other words, mid-game, stays this way until 35, and then in late game, he actually spikes back up. Because um, at six items, Pantheon actually scales like a beast, because he doesn't need to buy his Rolder's Grudge or any Last Whisper item, his ultimate has armor penetration built in. So it's very extreme, and it is very, very late in the game that he comes back up. But, something to note, um, he is very much early game based, and then he uh, spikes back up very late game, because, again, his armor penetration on his arm means he can buy more... AD and health items, then like, he can basically buy one more AD and health item than other champions can. Uh, keep in mind, this is not like something that's always relevant, just something to think about. Uh, Samira is actually another example of this, if you want to look at her win rate graph. Uh, she's the same. Very strong early game, right? So very strong early game champion. Uh, actually, apparently not in solo queue. People are losing early game with Samira. I I'm surprised. But anyway, she comes from pretty high win rate. Uh, 20 like here's 15 or 20 minutes it's 49 it goes way down to 47 here i believe what is it yeah 47 uh in mid game and then it spikes back up at three items so basically in other words she has a power dip at two items in in, in the average game um and that's something that you want to consider right then once she starts getting items she scales back up so um something to really consider when you're playing a champion is also the power curve now i know these things because i play the game a lot and i have this knowledge but you can use statistics in order to get a general idea um, and this is not always true. Obviously, certain champions will change, like certain champion interactions will change. Uh, like, for example, what happens if you pit Samira against Pantheon? You know, who's going to be weaker early game? Who's going to be stronger mid game, etc. Changes relative to the champions you're playing against. But this is something that's interesting. Let's look at Draven, because someone in chat asked uh, how Draven's power curve is. Um, but that's just something you consider. Basically, he's a beast early game and then never comes back unless he gets really far ahead and wins. So. Um, Draven just descales, which makes a lot of sense, basically. Either he has a huge gold lead and people FF against him, or, um, he kind of just stays the same and then drops off late game, right? So he's just, like, really strong early, and then kind of just starts sucking mid-game. Not sucking, but he just kind of, he drops down a little bit, maybe he gets to his th fourth item or third item, and he just kind of stays the same. He's an early game champion that doesn't scale poorly, but isn't anything to, you know, write home about. I would say that's what his curve tells me. Um, let's look at Orianna, for example, just to, you know, this is a champion you play a lot, and I'll look at Swain as well. This is just extra information. You can tell Orianna sucks ass early game and then picks up, spikes, and then obviously after she gets her three items, um, she kind of evens out, but still much, much better than an early game. 
Uh, Swain, uh, I'm assuming he's going to be really strong early and mid, and he's going to fall off late. Uh, actually, no. Uh, I'm surprised about this curve, to be fair with you. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I'm a bit surprised. I feel like one item Swain is really strong, but that kind of makes sense, right? So one item Swain is really strong. Then he falls off a little bit at two two to three, which surprises me. I'm guessing people aren't like, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I feel like Swain is usually really strong, but this is all games. So keep in mind, this is games where Swain does well, games where Swain does poorly. Either way, you get an idea. Uh, you basically just want to make sure. Um, what I do is I just make sure I'm aware of this and I align my decision making with it, right? I did some coaching with someone for Victor. I believe on stream, I actually don't remember. It might have been, uh, it might have not been on stream, but again, it just helps to have this in mind of basically Victor spikes at one and two items. And you really want to play as hard as possible on one or two items. And then if you have the, you know, a big gold lead that you created with your one or two items, then you can uh, kind of stop this power dip from happening. The reason why, you might wonder why a Victor, you know, everyone considers him to be a late game scaler. The reason why his um, late game win rate drops is because he's not that long range, right? So something to keep in mind, range is OP late game. Anyway, um... How do you feel? I mean, you've been very quiet, so... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Everything good? I'm, Everything I'm just, good? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great, yeah. Uh, I'm just soaking knowledge. Uh, awesome. You know, uh, I, I don't know if there's too many questions I can ask. Pantheon is a pretty basic champion, not a lot of combos. Uh, is it ever uh, prominent to hold your Q? So, for example, you do the uh, auto W auto E for your auto attack cancel. Can you just hold your Q then? And then... Uh, instead of like queuing before E or should you queue before E? So the thing is, is um, maybe there's a world where early game you would E before Q, but late game, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get some items so I can show you this, right? So let's say you have Cleaver Eclipse and then I'm gonna buy your moves instead of CDR shoes, but you get the point, right? It's like, this is CDR shoes. Uh, and especially with points in Q, what you'll notice is, uh, let me turn this off because that defeats the purpose. What you'll notice is if you let your E rip, your Q's pretty much back up. So the idea is, is you should weave in an extra Q, right? So you should QE, okay. And then this is without any CDR, you get another Q. So the point is, is um, yes, there's, there's spots where maybe, you know, especially if you have really good stack management that you realize like, so you do a combo like this. Um, well, basically that's kind of the awkward thing is it only really applies if you're at exactly, I believe two stacks. So let me, let me create a scenario where I have two stacks to, to show you this. So I'm at three now, let's see if it works at three. Oh, three, it kind of works too if you don't auto attack. But the point is, is like, if you end up with an empowered Q, it is the most damage um, once you have Conqueror stacked. So the reason why you would usually not do it, it's, it's actually exactly at three stacks because if you're at two stacks, you're still better off doing QWE and then after E rips, you Q again. So it's exactly at three stacks. Um, you're in a world where, if I can show you here, um, yeah, you might do W, auto, E, and then Q, um, for example. But I would say most of the time, uh, pretty much all the time, you want to rip a Q. Almost like, always, because the cooldown gets really low. That's the idea. That's why you always weave in the Q if you can. Uh, not necessary, but yeah. You could do it like this and then Q at the end. But um, yeah, honestly, even if you empowered E, it's really not that bad. Pantheon's damage is insane. Um, most, of the time, like, most of the time, the difference between empowered Q and empowered E, it's really not that big a difference. Um, obviously... Empowered Q deals uh, 350 more damage. It is a large amount of damage. Don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying is, is the cases where you not getting an empowered Q when you hit someone with a full combo is going to make a difference uh, are honestly uh, fewer rather than more, I would say. Um, but if you have the awareness to mix up your combos, that's obviously a good thing. Either way, uh, you really want to practice this combo. Um, just standard stuff. Uh, this one is really the one that's going to kill people. And then it, the skill of the champion is whether I can E in the matchup. You know, for example, some matchups you're going to have to reply. So against Darius, for example, when you do this combo, you can't actually E because he's going to kill you. You need to save your E when the stacks start getting high because you need to be able to stop him from stacking on you and create some resistance. So that's something to know. But again, you don't play you don't play top lane, so it's not going to be as rel relevant um, unless you play against some really strong um, melee bruisers. Um, most of the time, you're going to be able to eat them in the head and just kill them with it. Uh, either way, something to keep in mind. It is your damage immunity spell. You know, you can start using it on the way back. So if I W auto QE, I can start running away. And um, that'll make my life uh, a little bit easier if I'm trying to run away from like a Silas, for example. Like I want to trade with him, but I know I'm not going to kill him. So I'm going to chunk him and then run away with it. That said, most champions, you do this. 
Uh, they haven't even gotten to hit you once, and you're fully stacked on Conqueror. So usually you're going to beat the crap out of whoever by just auto-attacking them, igniting them, queuing them, whatever. They're just going to beat them, so. Either way. Pretty much it. So when I do simple champion reviews, you know, I like to hop into game real quick and get an idea of what you're, what's going on um, with your gameplay. And uh, we work from there. Okay. So, feel free to queue up, and uh, we're going to be uh, getting into a Pantheon game. Either way, like I mentioned, um, what, I, what I've gone through with you uh, applies to other champs. So, um, like I mentioned with you, I am for two and a half, three hours. So, if we are early and we, you know, there's not much to talk about, I'm happy to go in through another game with you uh, instead. Okay. So, since Pantheon's uh... pretty simple, I don't have to really discuss that many difficult concepts. Gotcha. Um, did you want me sharing screen or are you going to watch through i want you to be sharing screen yes uh, i do want to watch uh, your pov and i'll be recording it so okay. open this up so as we're in queue i'll just be answering some questions from chat do you have any advice dealing with ranked anxiety uh you have to just play through it uh, really how did you deal with ranked anxiety let me ask you me yes sir uh i don't exactly have ranked anxiety never did uh... No, you just, I just grind. Uh, I have anxiety in this situation because there are people watching me, but, uh, sure, that's that makes sense. Get used to. Uh, awesome. So, I mean, uh, I think ranked anxiety comes from maybe some insecurities about your own, uh, like where you're at. Mm -hmm. I think that comparing yourself to other players in your elo might be uh, a good way to break that because if you feel like you're consistently outplaying people it might just be that you don't have a certain level of knowledge in a different place so that's a good way to maybe not have ranked anxiety and kind of boost your own confidence a little that makes sense um i think focusing on yourself is ultimately the the way to go that's what I did. You know, it's, you play you play ranked, not for the outcome. You play it because you want to improve, right? Um, you don't want to focus too much on what this number goes up and down, um, whatever this says, right? I, it says diamond two here for me, or if this says challenger or says uh, silver or iron, you don't play for this. You play to gradually improve your decision-making and mechanics, and then this number will go up. It's, um, it's like when people say, like, I want to go challenger. It's great that you want to go high. But the way to get there is what you should define, not the outcome. So people that define, I want to get Challenger, and that's great, I'm happy for you. Go ahead, aim to get Challenger. However, one has to define what that looks like. For sure. Oh, well, I got auto-filled bottom, so <laughs> it's great. It's up to you. You can... Um... You can go ahead and uh, either dodge or ask for mid lane, for example. Uh, I don't like being like, I'm getting coached. Uh, please let me mid or something like that. I'm not a fan of that. But something you can consider yeah. if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I don't mind just dodging and we can just chill, talk a bit. We'll see what he says. Nice. Okay. I um yeah, I muted, but um I just want to make sure I, I went I just went to see a, a therapist slash psychiatrist. He was both, right, and it I just it. It, it ended up happening. Yeah, usually if you just ask nicely, people will consider giving it to you. At least that's my experience. I feel like setting expectations for yourself, like oh hey, I'm getting coached or something. Like I don't know, it doesn't really work. Yeah, I try to not let people. That is an interesting know user. What I'm doing or not doing, uh, just because. Yeah, I already told him this, they, and I was like, a lot of trolls. Having a username like this just doesn't do you any favors. Were like not. Nah. Just because you're doing that now. Awesome. So usually I like to look at the comp and be like, oh, that's a lot of AD. Maybe I shouldn't pick my uh, Pantheon. But in this case, you can just pick it. It doesn't really matter. I don't really mind. I mean, I can go somebody else, but... Uh... Oh, it's up to you. Like I said, like we're probably going to do another game because, like I mentioned... Uh, the first part of the session was very short because we're doing Pantheon. So if you'd rather pick like a Swine game or an Oriana game, I'm yeah. happy to do that as well with you. That said, I haven't gone through the mechanics with you. So um, what we'll do is do the other way around, right? So I'm going to watch yeah. you play Oriana and I'm going to judge you on your Oriana mechanics. And if they're not as good as I'd like them to be, I'm going to go through an Oriana VOD with you. Sure thing. Um, so I typically go...
Summonary, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Scorch, uh, okay. Footwear, Biscuits. Um, Nothing wrong um, with this rune setup. Uh, I'm fine with it. Like, if this is what you're used to running. I will say, um, armor is generally... Like, armor is pretty good on Orianna specifically because your base armor is really low. So that's one thing that I will say. I'm not a big fan of it. Attack speed on Orianna is great. And then, um, yeah, I mean, Biscuits or... Sorry, um, Magical Footwear or... Um, you could play... Um, What's it called? Cosmic Inside instead of Boots. It's something I consider a lot. Um, actually, in, in for champions like Orianna, I'm a big fan of rushing Tier 2 shoes or buying them early. So that can be like Lost Chapter and then immediately Tier 2 shoes. And you don't quite get that if you're playing thingy. So for me, Orianna is big about spacing. Spacing is huge for her. So for me, grabbing Tier 2 shoes is a really big deal early game. So I would always play Cosmic Inside instead. But if you're used to footwear, you can just do footwear. Uh, I am used to footwear, but uh, I'm totally down for trying that because something I have noticed is that when I don't get my two, tier two boots, I don't feel as fun in certain lane matchups uh, because I can't get my spacing. Exactly. So, for example, against Yasuo, it's a great example of a champ. Actually, it's Lux. It's Yasuo bot and Lux mid, or is Lux AD? We'll see in champ select. Either way, um, I agree with you. Also, uh, Cosmic Insight plus CDR shoes against a champion like Jarvan uh, cuts your flash cooldown by a minute and 20 seconds, which means you have much easier... Like, you have way more breathing room in the game. Every time he cages you, you flash. Your cage isn't... Like, you're, you're basically uh, have one minute and 20 seconds uh, mm -hmm. less to worry about, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Nice uh, Discord bug stopping stream. It's great. That's all good. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Awesome. I'm going to start recording, just to make sure I don't forget to do that. Awesome! Yeah, yeah. So you end up playing versus Lux and you don't have a Mar, but that's not a big deal. What I like to do against Lux, since she's a champion that outranges you, um, scaling E level 1 is really nice. Um, because you can respond to her, um, you can respond to her poke, and it gives you resistances, so you can just pop E every time she E's you, and you can block pretty much uh, half of the spell, I would say, if she plays Comet Scorch, but the extra resistances you get uh, do add up in, in, in helping you take poke. Now, if you want to, obviously you should wait, you know, maybe she's going to play really poorly, space really poorly, you can squeeze in um, some more poke um, with Q, uh, that said, just something to keep in mind. I don't know if it's something you do, but definitely think about it when you're playing against champions like Syndra, champions like Victor, uh, that skill E level 1. If you if Victor skills E level 1 and you have E, you're going to run a moon by just blocking his E's and, and tanking it. Something yeah. to think about. Something to consider. Uh, I, I My big thing is I try to just not get hit by skill shots. Um, because if I just dodge everything, then I don't take damage. Yes, my friend. And... <laughs> It's great that you have that point of view, but ultimately, uh, you want to have a sec. You want to have um a button to press. So like, you dodge the skill shot, right? Like so, Lux throws E. You see, you dodged it. You don't have to E, but you can still skill the spell in case you notice I can't dodge it anymore. Then you cast E. It's really that simple. It's a backup, right? I, obviously, if you dodge it, now you can walk up and hit her with an auto attack and cast self shield, right? Yeah. Makes sense. That's what That's I'm trying to talk about. So like. Oh yeah. You might not punish us as hard, but as you can see there, I want you to have the habit to, like, there you should have pressed E, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's what you have it for. Like, you tried to dodge it, great, but now that you didn't dodge it, you should know that you didn't dodge it, and you should skill E, like, cast E there. Like, you would have saved yourself 67 health, right? Just for free. All right. So keeping the wave neutral um, is really good against... Uh, basically, having the wave come towards you can be really good when you're playing control mage matchup because obviously you're, um, you're you're avoiding the ability to get ganked and you're allowing um, your, your jungler to interact with the enemy mid and you're denying an opportunity for the enemy jungler. So see, like there, this is what you're going to have to practice, right? So that's what I mean is like the moment that you realize you're going to get hit... Um, you're going to press E, and the times that you don't, you can save it, and then you can proactively look for a trade instead. Either way, I like that you're, you know, mixing it up. You're going to get used to it the more you play. There you go. Um, you notice how, even though you were uh, late on blocking the E, you still managed to block the Scorch and Comet damage? Yeah. And that saved you about, like, 50-40 health. 
All right, a little bit of a pixel action, so that, that kind of sucks, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, Ooh, if you could do me a favor, if you could reduce the quality of your Discord stream, that would help a lot, because right now it's like full pixels. Okay. Uh... Thank you. You can do it after you recall, don't worry, just focus on the game. Okay. Okay, okay. It's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I think uh, the Discord streaming yeah, sucks because he's trying to stream it at. Right now too, which is unusual, he's streaming it at 14, 40, 60 FPS. I think it's because your Discord streaming it like literally. Like 14, 40. <laughs> 14, 40, 60 FPS. Yeah, I think that could be 1080, 30, or even 720, 30. And yeah, you won't. You can half that and you won't struggle nearly as much. Oh, that helped. Nice. That was a good, that was good advice. Leave it and join. Oh, I mean, I I helped fix it. Maybe it was my internet actually. Maybe it's both. Who knows? Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Lux moved, so um, when you do get pushed in, it's nice that you can ping that someone's missing. But all good. All good. Someone mentioned you did ping or missing. Well, great. That's good. I was not paying attention. I was trying to fix the thingy. Discord quality, which it did actually get fixed, so that's nice. Uh, but still, I think it would be good. So here you actually just want to base, no? You have no resources. Okay. You can just base. Um... That when you're the one crashing a wave in this type of matchup, you can even sometimes just recall. Now, in this case, you can just stay because you can, like, in this case, you're too late, right? So now you're going to want to try and push this wave in again and then get a clean yeah. reset. Or slow push it into the next wave and then reset on the next wave. So, uh, in other words, in this case, I think it's going to be best that you wait until next wave comes and you're going to crash it. Either way, both of you are kind of just going to oink and do nothing. Try not to use your spells. Do not use spells need to save your mana in order to blow up the next wave. Because, again, the plan is to recall in this next wave. So don't... If you miss a CS, that's life. This wave, we're going to blow up with spells. So what we're going to do is we're going to save mana for our highest damage spell with this Q, and we're going to use the Q three times on this wave. So first on the back line, always use spells on the casters. So go ahead. Nice. Uh, you QW'd there. That's fine. Um, again, used E here. That's not efficient usage of your mana. Uh, it does way less damage than Q does. And you know you're going to get another Q as you're clearing this wave. So... Uh, gotcha. Just a waste of your spell, right? Now you could have already crashed this wave had you used Q instead of E, and it would have just been cleaner, uh, which is the idea. Either way, you got the wave in, you get your lost chapter, you, you're going to TP back pretty much even with her. Um, and this is where Ariana already comes online, so I'd like to see you try and... Um, well, show me how good you are at her, right? Because this so far, you've really, literally not interacted with her. Yeah. Uh, um, so I can't really judge... Like, I can't judge how well you play Ariana, other than the fact that, like... Well, you're just farming, which is great. It's not bad to farm. Just, I'd like you to. I'd like to see some laning phase action, some spacing in the lane. Awesome. Kept the wave in a good spot. Lux is bot lane, so blowing up this wave is really good, right? Very good. Try to stand in front of the melee creeps when you're using your spells, um, like Q, because it actually has a, you know, it has damage from where it travels. So in this case, you could have pushed faster. So look at the situation bot lane as this is happening and judge yeah. whether you should move or not, right? In this case, you're not going to move. I mean, you could actually. Um, however, uh, no, it's too late. Um, you could have, but the point is, is um, both of the information that we were too slow with pushing, as well with the fact that uh, you can just use your spells, right? Like you're waiting, like your Q has a really low CD, right? So use that right. immediately. That should be the first thing you do when you try to push a wave is to Q. And then now you take a plate for Lux's roam. Now, I mentioned you could have roamed because Jarvan's really low and you can pick a fight one v one with Lux and then try to outplay them. But same thing here. What are you going to do? You're going to Q the wave immediately because you want to push this wave, right? Lux is still not back. She did the Drake as well. She's being greedy. Great. We're going to Q again. Awesome. Oh. San could be ulting at you, so be mindful. Yep. We're going to use our art. Very good. Ideally, we wait until he uses his um, Q, because we're going to have to flash this. All good. Well, you waited, like, the maximum amount of time possible. And now Lux is out of resources unless she levels up, which will be very soon. So be mindful. She will have resources. Uh, but I like that you tried to like, squeeze out the most you could out of your flash. That was very good. So, again, we don't have flash. So if we want to stay here, um, 
we're probably going to have to... Like, we're either going to have to play safe, because Jarvan will gank us, he's about to hit 6, and he'll just kill us. So what you're doing right now, you're going to die to Jarvan if he ganks you. Uh, yeah. Or you're going to just try to fast push the wave and recall. There's a fresh wave here, and you're safe, so you can just stay. Okay. Again, like, don't walk up this far unless you need to farm the creeps, you know what I mean? Like, you're walking up, but there's no creep that's low health. And you can farm with Q at this point because you have enough mana, so keep that in mind. If you're going to stick your neck out, do it, because you absolutely have to. Um, but basically, the reason why I wanted you to stay is, and this is just because Lux is eventually... She needs a base more than you do, basically, right? So all you need to do is just make it not interesting for Jarvan to interact with you. So this way, if you can just crash, we're going to make a... This is a play where it's like, if Lux is still here and Jarvan ganks me and kills me, so be it. And if Jarvan solo kills me, but I get the wave, honestly, that's not so bad for me. Uh, very good. Um, but that, that's why we're doing this. Awesome. Very good. Recall, obviously. Your goal is here to recall, right? Then you're recalling in vision, so Jarvan can cancel you, Lux can ult you. You're probably gonna get cancelled. This was really greedy. Um Yep. Um that's because you're you know, like the way you solve this is by knowing what you want to do. Like you need to make it, the plan I set for you is something you need to immediately execute. Same thing here, go in fog of war. Like you're giving so much I will go I'll actually I'll just shut up and I'll explain all of the to, to after this game, because I think it'll just confuse you. Um I'm just gonna let you play your game. Um Obviously, I'll give you advice, but I think it's going to be too much otherwise. So, boots tier here, or...? Up to you whether you go tier or not. Um, if you like tier, you can still buy it, yes. Um, I think it's totally oh. fair. I would start running ASAP. Uh, note that the fountain regens you um, all the way up to the steps. But I'll show you this as well. Yeah, uh, I know sitting uh, yeah. like right there can still get you yes you tell me you know but you don't do it so you don't know well enough you know what i mean <laughs> just uh just playing bad that's okay i don't mind um just just want to make sure i give you that advice and like i said i'll go over all of this after the game but um there's a lot to, there's a lot of good stuff i can go work with you already so i'm, I'm actually already happy i know your bot lane's griefing and it's going to be a rough one so um don't worry about that it'll be all right So the thing is, is I'm I'm going to be a little bit harsher with him because like he he basically when I asked him, um, you know when I asked him, like for example, you know when I asked him the question of like when I explained to him why he should skill E and, he, and his mindset is like that Jarvin's doing. That's kind of I just dodge skill shots. That for me is like, all right, there is ego that has no reason to exist, and uh, the way I address that is by uh, being a little bit more direct. In other words, a little bit mean. That's why I said, like, clearly not enough. Because, like, if you tell me you know, but you don't do it, then you don't know. It's not a habit. When it should be a habit, you know? Like, you're half-assing it. Um, but stuff like, yeah, I just dodge forehead. It's like... I mean... Sure. It's plan B, right? Alright, so this is actually a pretty good move, I think. Uh, we'll see how he plays the mechanics of it. This can, can be very dangerous. I'd like to see him press R there. Yeah, that was greedy as shit for me. No, it's not a big deal. I don't mind you moving. So, Threshold Stopwatches is the most you're going to get out of that situation in general. Like, going vault side right now is just not good. Um, when someone is fed, I'll explain this to him in the vault as well, but when someone is fed, you only attack that lane when it's, uh, basically when you have a power spike to do so, right? And in this case, we don't have any power spike to attack this lane. Oh, damn, that really sucks, actually. Solution got a kill there. That would have been really nice. It's all Is good, I fixed the Discord stream. No? Always. Without a doubt. <laughs> you're trying to scale still, right? So you need to use TP. Yeah. You're not a, you're not a tank, you're not a top laner, you are a control mage. Farm and gold income is king. Right now her resources are terrible. So push as fast as you can, right? You want to attack her resources um, whilst protecting yours. Uh, here, you know, as you're pushing this, the best thing you can do is check. Can I get a play? Yes, no. Can I roam somewhere? Yes, no. Etc. If you play with lock camera, it's a habit you want to break eventually. Is it a problem? No. But you're going to want to stop doing that eventually. So when you break the habit, up to you. I just, I, I want you to acknowledge that it's not the right thing to do. I hold spacebar down, right? I literally, 
how I learned is like I I played unlocked camera and I unbound lock camera. So the Y button, I unbound it in my settings, and to this day I don't have it bound. Um, and that's how it, I couldn't lock my camera. So what I learned to do is hold space, but I got comfortable with moving my camera anyway. So that's just a little bit of advice I can give you. So try to press tab when someone TPs back in and understand how strong they are, how, understand how strong you are, and play relative to that. So in this case, people are coming to you mid. Let's keep that in mind, right? There, you're giving Thresh an angle here, and you're going to have to flash that. Um, yeah. You see, so, like, you tell me, like, I just try to dodge things. That's great. I'm happy that you try, but you're going to have to just set a parameter. Like, for example, like, if he throws max range hook and you say, I'm going to try to dodge it and then react to the hook, that's fine. But if he flashes, I'm flashing. Yeah. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. Uh, obviously, they can flash hook you, so you want to try and be as smart as possible about that and, you know, flash in a way that flash hook isn't going to hit you. But because you're not mentally preparing yourself to flash his flash, you're saying, I'm going to dodge his hook, which is great, but you don't have a plan B in case he changes his plan. Fair. Uh, would you say that if people flash on you most times, you should just flash away? No. I would say you should have to decide well, when he's running at you what you're going to do. There is no guarantee. I would say hooking champions, yes. But for example, Jarvan, if Jarvan flashes on you and you flash every single time, what is going to happen? He's going to jail you and you're dead no matter what. So the only way to outplay Jarvan is to, even when he flashes on you, is try to dodge still. And then you save your flash for when he cataclysms you. And if he EQs you, knocks you up, then you can argue, yeah, I can flash and die and get his ult. And is that worth more than my flash? Depends on the situation. But that's why it's like, I don't want to give you a, a, a cookie cutter answer on that question because it, there is no cookie cutter answer. It really depends on the champion you're playing against. Hecarim is another example of like, you know, if I if you always flash, I mean, Hecarim uses ghost, I guess. So <laughs> so hitting this mid turret is irrelevant, right? Like, why are you doing this? Yeah. You're yeah. never going to get this tower. Involve yourself in the game. Keep yourself safe. We're playing for Luden, so what are we going to do? We're going to wait in fog. So just go all the way. Like, Alistar wants to make this play, ping him back, right? Like, this is never going to be a good play. Help him max range is fine, right? But just make sure Jarvan can't kill you instead. Yeah. All right, not, not bad, not bad. I'm, I have a lot to work with um, from this game already. So this might be a very long VOD review, okay? <laughs> Keep that right. in mind. No, that's fine. Uh, I, I have a lot to learn. Uh, I mean, you know... It's all good, I don't mind. Like I said, no harm done here, okay? I don't mind at all. Very good. And that's fine. One thing to note, you know, you can just recall here in the next time. And not right not right now, because it's too late, because you're gonna lose minions for it, but next time someone makes a move and you can't interact with it, you're gonna get in the habit of recalling when you can't interact with it. Awesome. Sweet. One of Oriana's biggest strengths is to, you know, be able to speed up strong members on our team. So that's really nice. We're going to want a base here. We can't push mid. Uh, I mean, actually, we have to push mid because we put yeah. Herald down. I was yeah. worried that they're going to go for our Nexus, but it's all good. And we're gonna just hit this once in base because uh, Thresh is collapsing. Why is Thresh collapsing? I don't know. I, I meant base as in like walk somewhere safe to base, but um, again, if you want to base in their face, that can work sometimes. Just keep it in mind. Um, you know, I don't want you to die is really yeah. uh, the reason why I want you to base. When I say, so this is like a, a terminology thing. Uh, never buy a health potion there. That is just irrelevant. You're wasting 50 gold, literally. Yes, it's terrible. Always buy a pink. Uh, okay. If you're gonna buy a consumable, it should be a pink. And if you're gonna buy no consumables, I'm fine with that. But one health potion is actually illegal, and a refillable potion <laughs> I'll allow at least. But a health potion, like what is a health potion going to do? Uh, panic buy equals yeah. It's fine. I don't mind. See what I mean? Like there, I want you to get in the habit. Like great that you try to dodge, but you notice as you're dodging, you can't dodge. Press E. There. It is something that I I lack to do on Oriana. 
What is? Uh, just pressing E to not take damage. I, I agree, yeah. When you have a shield, pressing it not to take damage is generally a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the army super good here? Yeah, I don't care. It doesn't matter. This game's lost. I mean, it's not lost, but it's going to be really hard either way. So be mindful when you touch waves like that. Let's run top, kill this guy. Why not? Yep. We're not doing anything else anyway. Let's take the aggressive path, right? Like, you don't have to walk all the way around when you can cut the guy off. You know everyone on their team is on dragon, right? So Yeah. You can take a more aggressive path so you can cut him off. Alright, we didn't get an assist, that's fine. Not showing is good, you don't want to show here. It just loses pressure on the map. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's not even losing pressure, you don't have any pressure. But the point is, is, like, let's go defend the Nexus because Lucian can't. So what we're going to do... No, no, fuck the midwave. We're going to go to the Nexus. Yep. Yes, very good. Yep. Lucian doesn't want to defend the Nexus, he can defend mid turret instead. He doesn't want to defend mid turret. Well, we're going to pick what we defend, and in this case, I mean, it's fine. You know, if the guy doesn't want to play the game, that's up to him. You can think coaching is useless in, in League of Legends. No one's asking you to buy it. If that's your opinion, that's fine. I hope you're uh, as high as you want to be. The thing about coaching is I'm going to tell him things he's never thought of. And I can tell you right now, he, these are things what that he's never even thought of. You Push just out. finish your Archangels. I mean, yeah. here you just stay bot lane until you have to TP the Baron. There's no other play. And then whether you TP the Baron or not entirely depends whether the play is possible or not. But here, you're just going to have to keep staying bot lane and pushing, and when someone responds to you, you play accordingly. So, right, if Silent comes to you, you're not going to let him kill you, obviously. Yeah. But the idea is, is you're going to base for mana, you um, can't push the next yep. wave, and then you're going to defend top and catch waves bot as much as possible. Sell Dorans by uh, Neelis? Uh, sell pink. Well, fine. Doesn't matter. Let's just go defend. The reason I'm telling you to sell pink is because you haven't placed it, and if you don't don't have the habit of placing pinks, well, they, what do they do for you? Nothing. True. Either way, it doesn't matter. I think that's something I really struggle on is knowing a good place to place pinks at. I'll um, give you all the pinks you want to put ever in your life. All right, look about wave. Yep. That's what we're gonna go catch. Like we're we're oinking here, and then like it's fine, but this fight was just not winnable. So we're gonna go defend bot. Yeah, I mean, again, coaching is for people that are open-minded, you know? Like, if, you're, if you think it's useless, then you're not open-minded, and of course it's going to be useless. Coaching in anything works, man. You can get coached in how to sleep. Like, literally, you can get coached on everything in life. If you think you're optimal in the things you do in life right now, that you haven't spent active effort thinking about how to, imp like, how to improve, you're probably wrong. And this comes to walking. You can get coached on how to walk properly. You can get coached on how to sleep. You can get coached on how to eat better. It's good to have the habit to hover here, but it looks like it's going to be nothing. We'll see, though. Oh, awesome. Very nice. 1k gold. So, calling Baron here is actually not bad. I, I quite like it. Um, just base here. Just base, and if their team listens to your pings, you go Baron. And if they don't, you don't go Baron, right? But the idea here is... Uh, you base and you have TP, so what you're going to do is you're going to buy this item, you're going to go defend, and then you're going to TP to the Baron if your team needs you. Uh, death cap next, yep, for sure. Any tips about walking straight? I don't have any, because I don't walk straight for shit. But, just to keep, just, like, you know, like, actually, I struggle to walk straight. I'm not even joking. Um, if I'm walking on a sidewalk, like, I will actually zigzag, like, I will hover one side. So when I'm walking next to someone, sometimes I would, like... Eventually, after five minutes of walking, bump into them, and it's really cringe, I'll be honest with you. Alright, this all Baron, which sucks, but um, that's because Mordekaiser is allergic to pressing R. Not a big deal, keep farming. Yeah, it's okay, don't worry. Maybe you can collapse on Jarvan here, he's coming to you, he's in the Tri-Brush. Oh, sorry, not in the Tri-Brush, he's in the Golem Bush. He's probably gone by now. 
You can use Blorb for information here. Yep. Alright, he's gone. That's fine. Just push the next wave. It's okay. Actually, Mordecai's just cutting off the wave, so you don't have to. Wait, what, Perma bumping into me? I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's here, so take it. I, I, I just thought he cut off the wave. He didn't, so yeah. we don't have to. But yeah, like, I'm saying, I, 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 I think about it, but I don't think about it in a way to fix it. Now, I was like, oh, fuck, I should stop doing that. I would buy Blue Pot here, but... Why? Press extra tab. A extra AP. You want to fight this soul? Yes, buy it. You don't want to fight this soul? Don't buy it. Really that simple, right? I'm yeah. not saying why as in, like, why would you do that? No, literally, why? Like, give me the reasons as to why you would do that. If you're going to fight yeah. the soul, it's a good buy. But if you decide not to fight the soul, don't do it. So in this case, let's TP the group with our team, right? Oh, well, it's yeah. gone already. So it sucks, but we have the intent of joining the fight, right? Right. Um. So at least the, the, the intent behind the buy makes sense. All right. We're dead, so let's go defend top, because that's the weakest place in our team right now. We're gonna make school and walking the same as a useless video game. I don't know if you think this is useless, bro, but there's, um... I would say there's probably over 20,000 people that make their living. Just in League of Legends. Not talking about Riot Games as a company. Just League of Legends, right? So people that are balancing the game, creating the game, designing the game, everything. Right? Everything involved. Over 20,000 people. And of those 20,000 people, I would say about 5,000 people are esports related and that is gameplay related. If you think that is... And this is, a, this is me pulling out numbers out of my fucking ass, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it's more than that. But I have made my living playing this game for years. And if someone is able to... Like, let me put it this way. If you follow the things I tell you to the T and improve on the concepts I try to teach, you will also make a living playing this game. So, uh, is it useless right now for you? Yes. But it might not be in the future if you work on it. And that's why, you know, like, I tell people that very honestly. Like, I tell them, look, if you're not going to grind your ass off and try to make something out of this, it's useless. Not to mention, some people like to get coached in their hobbies because they enjoy doing it better, right? So, for example, someone hiring a more experienced gardener to improve their gardening skills, which are pretty superficial, I would say. Having your garden look nice is a superficial thing I think we can all agree on. Uh, obviously, if you're someone that gardens uh, for, for their food, you know, for their food income, you know, like, as in, like, how do I even say this? You know, if you garden for the sake of, like, sustaining yourself that's a different topic but if you're someone that gardens just to have flowers in your in, in in your garden i'd say that's pretty superficial and yet people will pay a gardener to do it for them or if they like doing it themselves is they'll pay for people to teach them how to do it again there's nothing wrong with that people can do whatever the fuck they want with their money i don't know what's your why well, it's your problem and why why you make a big deal out of it Same with cooking, exactly. People buy cookbooks to get better recipes. All good. Rit. Don't worry about it. Like I said, I have plenty to work with. I'm going to stop the recording here as your Nexus is about to explode. And we are going to get in and work on this. Awesome. So like I mentioned, this is going to be a pretty long vod review, so... Strap yourself in. Get comfortable. You want to go get a drink or something? Okay, Now's the time. Ready. Awesome sauce. Awesome. We're gonna go in and I'm gonna break down everything that you're doing. And honestly, how we can improve it, because um this is both bad and good news. The bad news is is everything you do can be improved. Well, let's put it this way, maybe that's the good news. The good news is everything you do can be improved. Literally everything. Um you have not optimized anything of your gameplay. Um which means that the fact that you've gotten to the ELO you've gotten to without having improved literally anything. And this might be because you're stressed. I'll be fair with you. Uh, this can happen. Now, I'm just going to assume that this was you playing the normal game. That's just what I have to go off of. I have to. If you play better uh, on average, then great. This is still going to help you. But either way, let's get into it. Uh, the bad news is, like I said, I am going to have to go literally through every little decision you make. So I hope you're ready for that. I am 100% ready. I'm ready to awesome be sauce. absolutely ripped apart. Very good. Um, so like I mentioned right now, great that you have the habit of dodging here. Really good that you're clicking away. 
you know the skill shot's gonna hit. You got gotta press E. It is a bit of experience, and obviously in this case, I know that Luxie is gonna hit you. When she casts it right here, like it's on her to miss it, not on you to dodge it. I will say, um, there's a certain amount of Lux range that it's just like you can't dodge it after a certain point unless you have a lot of movement speed. In which case, you don't. So this is always going to be press E. Either way, you can also press E to block the Scorch and thingy damage, because um, if you want to check, you know, I'm just going to do that. You're going to do it later, but I'll mention it here as well. Boom, 27. Boom, 15. If you press E, you're blocking still a good chunk of the damage you're taking, so keep that in mind. Um, that is a nice thing. And then, like I mentioned, because you get those six M like this little bit of 6MR, it does help as well take a little bit less damage. Either way, I'm mentioning this because Lux outranges you, so there's no point in skilling Q and trying to fight her to the death, because she just beats you, right? If she E autos you and you Q auto her, she outdamages you significantly, uh, which is why we start E in this matchup. I'm going to fast forward a bit because you're just CSing and that's fine. Once we skill Q here, uh, if she uses E, we can look for an opportunity to Q. So again, I want you to set that in your mind, you know, like you're not even looking for it, right? You're you're not posturing. Like what I'm saying is if she's going to E here and you're not even going to try and walk into her. Yeah. I and I'm saying you can walk up until here, look for a Q and then walk away. And what I'm saying is like, this is very optimized things. And like, this is super optimized the gameplay, but this is what you want to aim towards being right. In fact, I just realized I haven't gone through an Oriana vault with you, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go watch an Oriana vault, and we're gonna watch Chovy because Chovy is, is a beast. Yeah, Chovy's Chovy. <laughs> so we're gonna use Chovy. Uh, do we have a vault from this year? Chovy stream. Oh, POV vault, craigasm. Nice. This is what you want to see, yeah. All right? The POV vault are the best if you can find them. Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, really pay attention to the intent of his movement, right? So he cues, he's fishing for a cue. He plays bone plating, so he's going to trade really aggressively with LeBlanc. Uh, so in this case, right, so you notice how in this matchup he's killing Q with bone plating. Like, geez, like that's some fucking laning phase juice he's got right here. Um, either way, um, you know, a lot of the Oriana players will not take bone plating and then just kill E and they'll just reply to LeBlanc. So they'll just E themselves and then auto attack twice for the two auto she does after Wing, and that will be the trade and they'll lose it slowly. But he says, fuck all that, I take bone plating and I fist fight my opponent. Um, which I, I can respect, you know, and then see how is it, this is what I mean with this intent, you know, and this is what I really meant is like, he wants to fight. Yes. Yeah. How do I know that? Because he's playing here. Yeah. He's super far up. Exactly. And you'll notice that when he wants to not fight anymore, he's going to stop doing that. You see, he wants to not fight anymore because his spell is on cooldown. So as soon as his spell is on cooldown, he leaves. Right. Yeah. And that is just how it works. He leaves. Now, he's going to fish for an auto-attack because she's CSing, so he wants to auto-attack her when he CSs. His Q is back up, he fishes for it, he knows that LeBlanc is running in at him. So, so one thing to note here is when his Q is coming back up, he's going to start fishing again. So I'm pausing here. He stopped running, he was running in this direction, and now he's clicking in this direction. You see this, right? Yep. Why is this? Uh, Q range, maybe? No, no. Why? why did he leave and why did he come back? I mean, he wants to fight. He's, he sees that the LeBlanc is probably about to try to come in. Correct. But why specifically now? Well, his Q is almost on cooldown. I mean, Perfect. About, Thank you. I'm brand. making yeah. sure that, that this is what you recognize as well, right? So he wants to fight. He's wanted to fight the entire time. Level one, he wanted to fight. When it's, like level one, he fought like literally. He has bone plating, and this leads him to all in basically, right? So let's run it back, right? I'm 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 literally gonna go through this so you understand it fully. Level one, he wants to fight. What does he do? He all ins. Yep. He knows he wins, he fights to the death, he leaves. Now, he doesn't want to take creep, he doesn't all in, sorry. He just trades really hard and he makes sure these creeps don't fist him, right? Because if he steps in here and um, the one fights with her creeps and his creeps don't help him, he's going to lose, just specifically mentioning. But he walked into her. So, instant replay, one more time. Watch how he plays level one. Level one, he's hugging the melee creeps. When someone hugs the melee creeps, they want to fight you. That's just how it is. LeBlanc is at her range creeps, he's at his melee creeps. He wants to fight. He's baiting this exchange right he really is telling her please fight me so he exchanges with her fights really aggressively but just playing to leave right so his, the way he's trading is he, he uses a spell and then he kites away when the spell is coming back up he's going to turn around and start um as soon as the spell starts coming back up he's going to take space right how much space he takes entirely dictated by how much space LeBlanc takes, right? So this is just high-level laning, right? So he's taking this much space. So you notice I'm going to draw a line here. This is how much space he's going to take, right? He's walking all the way into here, taking all this space. Um, I'm just going to draw this properly for you. So he's taking in a massive amount of space, right? He's literally... Look at mid lane, right? This is... All of this is mid lane, right? Yep. He's taking the entire fucking lane because he says, that's how bad I want to press Q on you because I have Q and you don't have W. Yeah. 
So look at how much space he takes. And then he stops, right? So he's not going to run into a tower, but he, look at all the space he's taking. He's taking even more. My lord. This is how much space he's taking. So let's draw LeBlanc's auto attack circle. Let's say it's about this, right? Maybe it's a little bit longer. My drawing isn't perfect. Get the point, right? What I'm saying is, is if I right now look at you, I look at the size of midline on the minimap right now. This is how much space LeBlanc has. And this is how much Oriana has right now. Yes? Mm -hmm. Literally, the whole fucking lane is hers. Yeah. Because she has spell and, she, and LeBlanc does not. Now, obviously, when you're playing level 1, you can do these things because jungles can't quite gank you. And you have, um, you know, for example, he has a ward right now that can keep him safe from a gank. Plus, there's no gank set up from LeBlanc because she doesn't have chains yet. But what I'm saying is, like, the intent he's displaying from level 1, you know, it's, it's 139 in the pod and I'm already showing you the difference between some of the best in the world and some of the people that don't do this, okay? It's... it's yeah. In 10 seconds of laning phase, he's displayed you concepts that you haven't even thought about. Okay? For sure. This is the beauty of it, right? And he's holding his ground. So once LeBlanc's cooldown comes back, so he gets the vibe, okay, and this is like a vibe thing, um, or you're very good at the game. But anyway, um, he's putting himself in a position where he gives a little bit of ground because he wants to be able to auto-attack without her auto-attacking him. So notice how he's going to take, he's going to give a bit of ground when he's CSing a creep. So when he's last hitting, not CSing necessarily, sometimes you just prep the CS. So in this case, he prepped the CS, but he's going to give ground because he's trying to CS. Notice, he's get, he's trying to CS. So he's going to cue her because she's trying to walk into her his range, right? In order to, when he auto attacks this creep, to get auto attacked. So what does he do? He cues her as he's running away, and then he's going to CS, right? Let's see in real time. And then once, you know, obviously this is real, like this is, min-max to a very high level. I'm not expecting you to be like Chovy. But I'm going to rewind, like, I'm going to rewind the whole thing. So it's very hard to pay attention to these things. But you notice how he gives? And right now, he gave. How much space? I'm going to, again, bring up the thing. How much space is LeBlanc taking right now? This is, I mean, okay. Let's say it's a bit, uh, I was a bit over. This is LeBlanc's range. Uh, and this is Oriana's range. And they're contesting space right now, right? Like, you're contesting each other within each other's range. Like, they're mm -hmm. about to start contesting range. And my point is, is like, you notice how suddenly he went from taking the whole lane. If I go to the minimap here, he, he went from taking the whole lane that you remember. Suddenly he's taking about this much, right? Right. So he gave a big chunk of space back to LeBlanc. Because he's on cooldown. He goes for a CS to LeBlanc. He fishes for an auto attack. LeBlanc doesn't have to CS, he backs off. It's his turn to CS, so he backed off. He CS'd, now it's his turn to harass. Notice, he was walking into harass there. So this is like very, like, okay, this one is going, like, this is super, super, like, this is like insane spacing, mind games, etc. But the point is, is like, he's dropping the CS in order to hit her for CSing this creep, but he notices that she's not going for the CS, so you notice she's not winding up her auto attack animation. So LB is going for a spell cast instead of an auto attack input, which means he starts dodging backwards and dodges her W. Because she's going for the auto W combo, because she stepped in. So my point is, is like, I don't expect you to be able to see this, nor, like, I'm, I'm not at this level either when I play mid lane. But what I'm saying is, is I just broke down everything that went inside this guy's head. And why he's fucking nuts, you know? Like, this yeah. is the nuts, right? To be able to see all of this in real time and do it, like, insane. I'll remind you, it's 18 seconds, like, it's 148, okay? I've, just to show you how good these players are and the concepts are that they are using, especially Chovy in this case. But, you know, it's it, this guy's been landing for, what, 20 seconds? And he's been doing shit that, like, you know, even for me, I'm like, holy fuck, this guy's good. You know, yeah. if I were LeBlanc right now, I would, like, W backwards right now, and I would take a moment and be like, Ooh! you know, like, sheesh. Yeah. This yeah. guy I'm playing against is fucking insane. So my point is, is um, Oriana is a champion that really, really, really uses spacing to her advantage. And once more, we're going to draw the circles again. How much space is Oriana taking or how much space is she about to take? About this much, right? So LeBlanc yeah. has comfort in this space, but he's going to start taking space. And, um, yeah, pretty insane stuff, right? And he takes maximum amount of space, and he's going to queue her. Uh, obviously, whether you hit or not, if you hit, great. If you don't, great. Once he uses Q, backs the fuck up again. Real simple like that, you know? And and, and this is going to be the, the TLDR. She goes for a CS, I walk up to hit her. This is what he's going to do for the rest of the lane, and then when she uses her W, he's going to try to dodge it. And that's kind of the idea. Now, he's successfully traded and uh, maintained a health advantage. Now, he knows that he's been attacking health rather than the wave, so notice she has a bigger wave, right? Because when LeBlanc W's in, she was hitting creeps, and he wasn't really using Q ever to hit creeps. He was prioritizing her health bar. So she's going to hit level 2, which means he gives space. How much space is LeBlanc getting? How much is he getting? This is about his space. 
right? Just to show you again, this is the first time in the lane that he's given over half of the lane. Basically, this is the first time he's given space, basically what is like even, right? So he's evened out the amount of space in the mid lane. We're both about 50-50, right? 45-55, you get the point, right? But what I'm saying is, is, the first time he's done it is when he absolutely has to. He takes the maximum amount of space possible. The other reason why he's giving so much space, compared to how much he was taking, because again, it, from going taking 80 to 100% of the space, he suddenly only takes 50, right? Why does he do this? Jungle can start interacting with his lane. Mm. We saw Jarvan, I, I don't know if it was Jarvan, I, I said Jarvan. We saw the jungler, I'm, I'm, I, sorry, I didn't mean to say Jarvan. We saw the jungler on Raptors, which means we can get attacked. It's Wukong. Yeah. Uh, we saw the jungler, which means we can get attacked. Right? So he yeah. starts giving space and avoid, includes jungle in his, in his decision making and the amount of t space he takes. I mean, very beautiful stuff, you know, like, honestly, this is why we love watching Chovy. Um, skills W, okay, you can skill Q2, uh, E, sorry, as well, but he decides to skill W. Uh, and again, you know, like, I'm going to go and, and show you one more time. I'm going to stop going into all this micro stuff. I just wanted you to start thinking about it, but just notice. Uh, when LeBlanc decides not to go for an auto attack input on this CS here, that means she's looking for a spell. You notice how he he's actually paying attention to whether she's CSing this creep. So you notice like, she CS these creep and use Q on it, right? She messed up her CS. And now here, she's dancing around, but she's not actually using her spell. Like, look, she's not putting in the auto attack command, right? Yeah. If I slow it down, you'll be able to see it, but you get it, right? She's not using an auto attack command, which makes makes him not walk up. He realizes, oh, so now I'm going to go back and pay attention to Chovy. I'm going to slow it down, right? Just to, just to get it. Get the brain juices flowing for you, right? Pay attention to his clicks, right? Click forward, clicks backwards, clicks forward, looking for it. He pressed S, he's looking for it. CSs, has the habit of when he CSs to walk backwards, right? So not only, uh, in this case, he wasn't actually looking to harass with spells. He was just trying to CS the creep. And as he's CSing, his habit is to step backwards because his auto attack is on cooldown. Now, she, she, um, she W's forward. He instantly replies with QW, right? W doesn't register, but the idea is there, right? She uses a spell, I respond with QW. And then now her spell's on cooldown, so I'm going to trade, right? So why did he give so much space to her there? It's because these minions are going to fuck her up, right? So here, he does auto, he does W, and I think he could have squeezed in one more auto if his spacing was a little bit better, I'll be fair with you. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, criticize someone that is clearly better at me than mid lane. But, a uh, little bit of criticism here, he definitely should have squeezed in one more auto here, because, yeah, he got, he got uh, auto queued and he could have got replied with an auto there for it. But, the intent is there, you saw him, he walked in, he traded, and then he backed off. I think he was a little bit greedy to try and get that W damage, I think, which is why he didn't trade back. Or why, why he, like, his spacing was a bit off, because I think he was trying to bait her to stay on the uh, ball so he could W her. And now he's just looking for max range poke. Now, one thing to note, uh, again, do you want to take a gander? Why did he suddenly take way less space? Uh, she's level 3, and has lockdown potential, and we don't know where Wukong is. Perfect. 10 out of 10. We don't know where Wukong is. So, against LeBlanc, we must give space. Even though 1v1, she's fucked. You know, like, she's been railed 1v1. Yeah. This is LeBlanc's strength. Set up kills, right? LeBlanc is a weak champion 1v1. Is she? Uh, I mean... She is a weak champion 1v1, yes. She is? Yes, she is a terrible champion 1v1. Every control mage in the game beats LeBlanc 1v1. Oriana beats her 1v1. I mean, uh, maybe maybe she can go even LeBlanc, but I don't think LeBlanc beats anyone 1 versus 1 straight up uh, out of control mages. Uh, like, I would say Azir beats her. I would say, um, I mean, Ari's not really a control mage, but Ari would beat her. Oriana would beat her, I think. I mean, maybe if you don't play the bone plating setup, you don't, but I'm pretty sure if you can play... So the point is, is if you can play aggressive, if you're in a straight 1v1 icebox scenario, you know, um, sandbox, I would say. Sandbox scenario, 1v1 straight up. I think Oriana would beat her. I think Victor would beat her. I think I mean, Victor smashes her. Um, Syndra would beat her. Azir would beat her. Ari would beat her. Um, I mean, obviously Lux would beat her, but... Pretty much, I would say LeBlanc doesn't win in against any particular champion one versus one if you're not scared of getting ganked. The reason why LeBlanc is scary is because you can't abuse her high W cooldown because you're scared of getting ganked if you do that because she can just E-flash you and kill you, right? Even if your W's on CD, E-flash will kill you, so you can't really look to be too aggressive. Uh, but if you're not worried, every time LeBlanc uses W, the amount of space you can take against LeBlanc because your cool skill cooldowns are like literally half hers uh, is insane. So I would say that. I noticed that... Um... He crashed wave and backed there. That was right around the same calling that uh, I think we you called for me to do relatively. I think it was a little okay. later than that, but... Good call, good call. I'm going to break this down for you. So the first thing um, someone in my chat asked, is it worth starting E in certain matchups? Yes, I already went over the starting E in matchups where it can be really good. Second thing, um, so the thing is, is he has low mana. 
right? He's starting to get low mana. He's already used the cookie. Uh, sorry, he has no cookies because he went bone plating, right? So he's no cookies. He knows that there's no way of replenishing his mana. And he's about to get a really good recall, which is tier plus dark. Tier plus dark seal, tier plus boots. Either way, he's going to get tier plus something, which is a really good base to have as most control mages because you get your tier plus a little bit of AP health or, or movement speed. Either way, it's up to you what you buy. So what is he going to do? He's going to blow up the wave. Uh, notice how he blows up the wave. You notice how when you were blowing up the wave, you were walking up, like you were doing weird shit, like walking here and then queuing, right? So you would queue like from here and then you would miss all the melee creeps, right? Um, which is fine. Just again, he really makes sure he hits all five creeps with Q and then he hits all five creeps with E. And then he, again, notice how he hasn't W. It's because for 70 mana, this is his lowest damage skill because you're considering W only hits these three. And uh, you know, you want to get into the nitty gritty. Um, the point is, E is 60 mana, but it hits five creeps, right? It hit all five of these, right? It hit this mm -hmm. creep, this creep, this creep, this creep, this creep. So even though it deals less damage, you know, at first glance, it actually does more damage if you hit multiple um, targets with it, which is exactly what he does. So yeah. that's why you notice he's only going to use W to finish pushing the wave. So you know, he's still not using W. He's using it to CS at this point, right? But the, the habit is not to use it. He crashes the wave and he's looking for a recall. So notice that... Well, as he's pushing, he is very, very, very clear in what he wants to do. He wants to leave. When you were pushing and crashing a wave, you would, like, hesitate and, like, dance around here. And I'll show you this in your vaults, but, like, you, this is your brain, you know? Like, yeah. what yeah, are we yeah. doing? This guy, boom, boom. Yeah, in and out, and he's done. Done. You know? Clear. Push. Done. No hesitation. Nothing else. Just very clear there's no thoughts clouding his mind there's nothing going on except i'm crashing the wave i'm leaving he's basing he's thinking what am i buying how am i buying like he's thinking as he's basing right now what is going through his mind what am i buying he already knows tier what am i buying with tier i'll think about it as i tp but i must tp as soon as possible in order to maintain my pressure he's gonna go boost plus pink boom done thinking walks up to the lane right now calculating where do i put my pink trying to get some information he's pressing tab checking oh she has dark seal i have tier boots He's downloading all this information. He has um, Corrupting Potion plus Dark Seal. He's adjusting his strategy right now. So it looks like he's pressing tab for fun. But no, he's checking. Right now, I mentioned. Press tab to check what's going on. He's just checked. Yeah. Yeah. Now he knows. Ah, she has, she, I know my items. I know her items. I'm formulating my strategy. Now, what his strategy is, I have to watch his gameplay in order to figure it out. But he has... Um, you know, he knows his champion spaces really well, so he's going to QW her, E her, and then use his shield in order to do a little auto-attack trade for her Q. If she wants a W in there, we have Q again, and we're going to punish her. So notice, QW runs away, CSs, holds his ground, because she's not taking as much space. She's running into us, and now we feel comfortable trading, because we can follow her if she Ws forward here. So if she Ws forward in here, so I'm just going to draw this for you. If she Ws into this minion wave, the space, the amount of space he took... Is going to allow him to hit her back, right? So he's already hit her back once. He's going to step into the W. And he's going to just wait until his Q cooldown comes back up and then trade her. Alternatively, he's going to run away if he's scared of Wukong. I can't say. But I'll say 1v1, he would just walk into her and follow her, which is why he's comfortable trading the hit there. Now his Q's back up, his QW's back up. What is he looking for? A little Q. Uh, one thing Ariana players love to do is leave their ball in the area. Why is this? Do you know? Uh, potential poke if they just walk over it. You can just press W. Also, it's no. balance. Yes, it zones. That's right. Uh, people walking over W doesn't happen, bro, okay? I'm just gonna say, if you're playing against people that do that, they are very bad at the game, okay? Uh, do not walk on Oriana's ball. That, don't assume your opponent is gonna do it either, okay? I just wanna clarify, this yeah. is not the reason why you put the ball here. Why do you put the... I want you to really think about it. Why put the ball here? Oh, yeah, it's for or zoning. anywhere zoning, okay? So what does that do? One thing is, is you can't walk near the ball, right? The other yep. thing it does is, there's another specific thing, a specific reason why you put the ball here. Uh, vision. Another, okay, that's a third, but not as relevant, but can be mindful. There's a third reason, okay? There's a very good reason why the ball is here and not on Oriana. Why is that? Uh, potential damage with E callback? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of right now, but... Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. So, um, he doesn't do it in this case. He recalls the ball and just crashes the wave. But, uh, the other reason why the ball being in the middle of the lane like this is good is because, let's say Oriana's playing here, or even here, right? Um... The is giving space, but the point is, is the distance for using the ball going from here to LeBlanc is shorter than here to LeBlanc, right? Oh, fair, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty I simple, think, but yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah, to make yeah. sure that you thought... I wanted to make sure you think about it. So when you put your ball somewhere, and you put it in front of you, um, often the distance is going to be shorter. Let's say you're playing here, right? The distance from the ball to go here rather than the ball to go here is going to be shorter, which is the reason why sometimes you disattach your ball in order to pressure someone. Uh, good job, the people in Twitch chat that got it. 
shorter queue travel time. That's the idea. And I'm not saying you always do it. You especially start doing it later when your QCD is really, really low, but something to think about. Just wanted to mention the concept. You'll see it later when he starts playing. But again, you know, I'm just going to bring this up one more time. I'm going to slow it down for you so just so you can get it because you are not doing this as consistently. It's like, look, he's going to walk up. Looks as he's walking backwards, he combos and he knows he's leaving after the combo. So the thing is, is like he knows after casting his spells, he's done, right? Yeah. So he's, he's walking backwards. Notices LeBlanc is running to chase to punish. Does a little QW and leaves. Same thing here. LeBlanc, I'm just going to show you this, right? LeBlanc's lost over 60% of her health because obviously she uses potions without even interacting with Oriana, other than two Qs. It's the only thing she's done to Chovy this lane since she's recalled. So yeah. I just want you to look at his HP bar and his bone plating, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and I want you to look at these two things, okay? Just look at his bone plating when he comes back up here. Um, look at his bone plating and look at his HP and I'm just going to fast forward. Oh, I'm going to do it slower so you can actually see. Wait, I'm, I went too far, I think. Let's go back here to when he gets bone plating. Awesome. Pause. I'm going to go fast forward five seconds at a time, and I want you to look at his HP bar, okay? This is where my eyes are at, okay? So just, just everyone in chat, everyone, you included, look here, okay? Look at his bone plating and look at his HP. All right, let's go back. Timing in game. 4.11. The first time he let LeBlanc interact with him. 4.49. Okay? Yeah. Just just, just to think about that. Think about that for a second. Is This is how he's playing the matchup. Okay? He's not letting LeBlanc interact with him. He's not letting her hit him ever. He is playing in a way where he only pokes. Okay? So this is a matchup. In other words, why is this relevant? Because this is a matchup where the only time he's going to start fighting. Because the next thing we try to understand is why is he suddenly trying to fight? And the only reason is that he's trying to fight her right now is because there's a significant health difference. In other words, this is a matchup where you only start fighting aggressively when there's a significant health difference. And this is what I mentioned with you earlier, right? When LeBlanc W's in, you can just step in and fist fight her. Because her yeah. cooldowns are so much longer than yours. So even though your spells are on cooldown now, right? You're going to get your set of cooldowns before she gets her set of cooldowns, right? So you are going to get these two spells before she gets her spells, even this spell, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why he steps in and all ins her. However, he's done it at a point where she's so low that she can't even like, do anything anymore. And he doesn't have to be concerned about Wukong anymore. How does he manage the wave? Let's see. And I want you to think, look at his decision making. Look at the, look at the decisiveness, right? That's what I really want you to look at. Uh, so obviously if Wukong ganks him, he's going to like EW him off, like he's going to W and basically, you know, run away from Wukong. But the point is, is like how safe you are and how you play against Wukong here is relevant. Notice that he went, he did go to ward earlier. I will go back. Uh, you mentioned you struggle with ward. So I'm just going to pause the frame here and tell you all the good wards for mid lane. You yeah. put this ward, this ward is the most useless ward of mankind. If you put a ward in this bush or in this bush, you are a lazy mid laner. Okay. This is lazy, lazy bush, lazy pink. Literally. Okay. It's called a lazy pink. Gotcha. Yeah, any good team calls it lazy pink. Why is it lazy pink? Uh, because it takes no time to put it there. And first it's reason. Easy. And it's first reason it takes no time. Sure, that's the second reason. Third reason. Why is it lazy pink? Why is it a bad thing? Why like, being lazy is considered a bad thing, right? Why is it a bad thing? Yeah. Why is this pink bad? Or why well, is this board bad? You're not getting any valuable information on the map from anything. True. Even worse, not only does it give you valuable information, it gives you incorrect information. Yeah. Uh, junglers can come from this angle. So I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause when he gets there. But uh, if you put the lazy pink, okay. If you put this lazy pink, uh, junglers can actually just do this. Yeah. And you will not see them coming. No, not at all. You will just die. This yeah. ward is baiting you. It's saying I have vision here, but it doesn't actually give you vision here. Junglers just walk past and you're dead. This is why it's a lazy pink. It is dog shit. It doesn't help you. This pink is literal trash in laning phase early game. Once you have this pink and this pink, so this pink becomes valuable when you have this pink because then you have a lot of space here that is being protected, right? Yeah. But early game, unless you have a pink here or a ward here, if you have a normal ward here, like this pink can also be okay. If you pink here and ward here, that's also fine. But once the vision here is gone, this is, like, obviously my drawing is bad. The point is, is people just yoink and kill you. In fact, like, I should really draw like this, right? Because the the, the ward doesn't give you any fucking vision, right? This yeah. is what this vision, this pink gives you. Jack shit. Even if yeah. you put it at the tip of the bush here, junglers can still do this. You put it at the tip of the bush here, junglers can still do this. That is why it is a shit pink. Now, in, in 
lower elos where uh, junglers are maybe not as efficient in moving around the map and, mm -hmm. and uh, contesting ward control, uh, I feel like when I play, I, I like to protect my lane and I do ward the lazy bushes a lot, but I don't pink as often. I usually just mm -hmm. uh, kill sure. ward. Uh, I noticed that I'll put vision behind me and to the side, like I'll ward pixel or something like that. Um, and it just gets instant cleared because there's nothing to protect. And it's just like, okay, well, now That's I That's because you have no lane pressure then. Because the thing is, is if Wukong, like either this, this ward gets cleared and he dodges a gank because he's fisting mid. So notice how, I'm just going to go break this down for you, okay? Notice how he goes to ward after he's done fisting mid, you know? Like right now, he interacts, like he doesn't ward right away, right? Like he's, he's not going right here to ward and then ward. He's just saying, I'm going to trade with her first, getting control of the lane, Getting away from a good spot. And this is greedy, I'll be fair with you. Like, he is saying, I don't want to drop a single CS or drop any ounce of pressure before I go ward. But once he's done pressuring, then he leaves Fogs. This pink is not for him, okay? Realistically speaking, I mean, you could argue that Wukong might W over this wall and then look for a gank like this. Um, and that's why he pinks here. You can say that if you want. But I would say most of the time, this pink is not really for him. It's just like, it's for his team, right? So both the fact that he goes missing here and if there's no vision here, maybe the enemy bot lane is scared because he could look like look look for a loop like this or look for a loop like this. Uh, unlikely, but something to consider. But most of the time, you pink here so your jungler can do his raptors without getting spotted. Because again, if you ward in this bush, um, for the people wondering, if you ward in this bush, the jungler can easily do raptors and not get spotted. But if there's a ward here, it will spot him doing raptors. So this pink basically kills off this zone and is really good because Poppy can take her raptors without ever having to worry to be spotted by vision. And then alternatively, this next ward, right? So he's actually checking for pink. Like, so, you know, in this little movement of him warding, he has covered this much vision, okay? He's covered all of this. He's covered this with sweep. And he checked the bush here. And he warded himself here. So he just took all of that space for his team. Yeah, it's really fucking efficient. Sorry for my yep. language. But... No, no, I, I, I don't mind. It's not PG... 13 or something here so <laughs> he's insanely it. efficient yeah. and then he comes back and he hasn't lost a single cs and the first thing he does is once he gets his control is we go back to taking the whole fucking lane <laughs> yeah yeah so I mean... my point is, is uh, this guy is obviously insane and what i'm saying is is in literally like in within four minutes and 45 seconds and a, a minute and something of that is literally not even gameplay let's say three minutes and 30 seconds of actual gameplay we have just broken down the difference between you and me uh you and me uh, sorry uh you and you and chovy <laughs> Which is insane. And then I would say this at 80% maybe or 75% is you the difference between you and me, right? Yeah. All of these small things that go through. So now I'm going to go less in depth because I just wanted you to start thinking about these things, right? And then we're going to use your VOD to see the actual difference, right? Yeah. Because it's going to be very stark and, you know, it's really going to open up your mind to understand how many things you can do better and how many, all of these small things you can improve. And I haven't even... I'm not touching really in-depth, complicated things like clicks and stuff, you know? Like, I used it once just to get it across, but that's not what it's about, you know? You want to start getting into clicks? Go for it, you know? But my point is, like, there's so much that can help you. Like, before I started having to consider where I'm clicking and how I'm clicking, and by the way, I don't even do it that often nowadays, like, I'll be real with you, but when I was getting into, like, optimizing my clicks and stuff, um, you know, just to give you an example, he always tried, like, when he's moving his character, he's always clicking near him right? He's always clicking here. Why? Because the distance between this click and this click is shorter than if you're clicking here, right? So if this yeah. is where you're clicking to move forward, and then this is where you're clicking to move backwards, you know, a lot more travel time involved here, isn't it? Right, yeah. And it is more precise to click near your character because your character can get creep blocked. So if he wants to, like, pass through a minion, if you click like this, right, and this click, 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 you can get through the minion. If you click here, your character might do this and then blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right? And my point is, is that can help. You know, something something I'm noticing uh, w within this conversation itself is, like, um, the idea of, like, knowledge that is, like, available, but, like, you might not understand that knowledge. Like, I can see Chovy do this, but I I don't fully understand why or what he's doing. There, I have no insight into that, you know? Yes. And that so is with, with like, you explaining it, like, yeah, obviously it makes sense. And, like, obviously I feel dumb for, you know, how I played. But, like, I, it's making me a better player. I'm understanding, like, oh, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Obviously you would want to do that that way. 
not the way that I was doing it, but it's, I just didn't know it, you know? No, I agree with you a hundred percent. That's the thing. I don't want you to feel dumb even because the reason why you're getting this coaching is so you can start thinking about it. Right. Uh, a lot of things in life ultimately come down to, I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. And that is what I'm trying to help you and everyone else that gets coaching. I'm trying to help you understand, like, I don't want, I don't want you to feel ashamed that you weren't thinking about it. There's nothing shameful about not thinking about it. The issue lies in, you know, if I give you this information and you stop considering it, that's a problem. But yeah, I think this is absolutely fine. I'm happy that you see that perspective. Um, that's the idea of it, right? So again, he takes all the space, right? So why isn't he hitting her underneath the tower and pressuring her? I uh, could get ganked. I mean, you're really far up. No, you only have protection Perfect. from the outside. That's you it, know. yeah. Yeah. That's it. So what does he do with his time? He goes and gets information. Is it much relevant information in this particular game? No. But it might be. Yeah, look right? at Wukong's right there. So like if he had... Look at bot lane situation. Her. All right, let's look at bot lane situation, right? Yeah. Let's look at their health bars bot. Total fucking slaughter. Like, this, this this guy's HP bar isn't gonna move. Like, they're both 1 HP, you know what I mean? Everyone yeah. is, like, fighting to the death here down bot lane. And he's playing a control mage, so instead of looking... So, don't get me wrong. Optimally, he's looking at the situation, right? So, Faker, yeah. for example, would be looking at what's happening and then judging. But he realizes... Like, this is Chovy, right? So, he's just thinking to himself, I'm gonna crash this next wave in base and I'm ahead and, and, and I'm good in the game and, and etc. But the point is, he's playing Orianna. So, he's actually just gonna take space and help them. He's getting information here. He's getting information on whether he's doing crab. He's getting information that Poppy can use to make a better decision and that the bot lane can use to make a better decision. Right? Yeah. That's it. Now, at a higher level, that makes sense. At like a, you know, high platinum level where I'm at okay. right now. I understand. I understand what you want to yeah. say. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, don't make excuses. Play the best League of Legends possible. And if you want to break a decision in the moment... That is suboptimal because of the game state, but you know that it's wrong, that's fine. But I don't want to see you dicking around here or dicking around anywhere when you could be doing this. He's losing nothing for this, okay? Right. If he's losing something, that's one thing, but please do not say, like, in my MMR, this is, like, wasted, like, this is not useful. It's like pinks, for example. Like, yeah, no one on my team is going to use the vision for my pink in order to make better decisions. Yeah, but you are. And my right. point is, is, like, you going here and getting information, right? Because, no, his, his ward ran out, right? His award is about to run out. Yeah. So let's say he doesn't go get this information, and let's say Wukong's waiting here, or um, maybe Wukong's about to come here, and he decides not to because he sees that you're taking this vision. So the thing is, the habit of him walking here, right? Wukong probably didn't keep track of this ward, right? Let's say, I'm going to go ahead and say this ward is not being tracked right now. This ward in the pixel? Yeah. We're going to agree on that, right? It's probably not tracked. But the thing is, if he sees Oriana disappear for 10 seconds, he, there might be a ward here, there might be a ward here, there might be a ward here, there might be a ward anywhere. So again, the habit of doing this is not just for his team, it's also for the enemy team, because Wukong doesn't know where this ward is going. He doesn't even know if Oriana has a ward. There. But seeing someone disappear for a little bit starts thinking. Uh, at this point, he's disappeared for so long that there might even be a ward at Wolves here, right? Like uh, up here, there's a bush at Wolves. Mm -hmm. There might be even a ward in there. So my right. point is, this habit of disappearing and hovering not only helps his team, it also makes it harder for the enemy team to know what Oriana is doing and where the vision is. Now he's going to press S here just to confirm that LeBlanc based, and then he's going to use his ultimate to crash the wave. So note, again, Q's first, and then he uses his ult to hit as many creeps as possible because he wants to crash the wave ASAP. And then here, that last hit, you notice how like he, he was like, I shouldn't do it, and then he tried to do it, then Wukong showed, and he's like, oh, fuck. Uh, so just a little note there. Try not to be too greedy when you're last hitting creeps. But all good. He recalls. He's up 6 CS against LeBlanc. Uh, obviously up six like raw CS he didn't even get the XP or gold and then he's a 25 CS lead in six minutes and 30 seconds of laning which is ridiculous thank you Lord Chobi for buying the tier two shoes tier two shoes on Oriana just helps the spacing so much and the yeah. spacing is really where you get the juice when you play this champion so thank you Lord Chobi for proving me right this is why free boots whilst they are great and they are cost efficient and they are great when you have them uh, tier two shoes helps you dodge ganks and helps you space against your opponent Lord Chobi is based as hell for the tier two shoes purchase and you notice, he doesn't interact with all this bullshit. He's a control mage. LeBlanc goes bot and kills them. Sucks to be you. However, notice. He's looking. He's, he's, in, he's, he's judging the situation. Watch this. One. One ping back. Two pings back. He's letting his team know, fuck off. Okay. Now yeah. some people will spam ping here, but he's like he's a good boy. He's saying like, eh, just don't die, please. You know, like he's chill. You know, he's not spam pinging. 
But the point is, is he's making very clear, even though the situation looks winnable for his team, he says don't, 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 don't. Because, again, that's just good communication. Again, this is another skill that you can develop whilst you're playing solo queue is communication. Pinging is relevant in competitive play as much as it is in solo queue, okay? Uh, the difference is, is I'm saying back off, don't fight, or be pinging. Like, it's similar, right? Obviously, one takes more effort than the other. It's easier to ping, but you get to see it. Again, Chobi and taking his space. The master of taking space. Da -da -da -da! How much space is uh, uh, Chobi going to take here, right? So I'm going to ask you a little trick question. How much space is he going to take here because LeBlanc went bot and used her flash and used all her crap? How much space is he going to take? Uh, he's going to take from beginning of his side up to right before tower probably over to pixel brush is about what he pretty takes. much right so yeah he's about going to do this right so he's going to do all of this is all his yeah. and then here's going to cut off and he's probably going to he's probably going to take this space by walking here and then threatening the poke right mm -hmm. so he's probably taking let me redraw he's probably taking this much space right this is all his on the minimap, just to show you, this is all his. If Luang walks into that, she's risking a fist fight. And the only time he's going to give this space is if Wukong walks into that space and tells him to back off. So, he re he's taking this space, right? So he initially started taking this space. Now he's taking a little bit more space because she's taking the plant. So he's saying, oh, you're taking the plant, which means I can take more space. Cool down. He's fishing. He's trying to nom the plant. And she's going all the way around, so he's, his job is done, because he's denied her the wave, and now he's going to go back to the wave. So in this case, you notice here? Yep. I mentioned it. Yeah, he's going to walk here, and he's going to contest the space. What does yep. he do the second he sees her? Oh, yo! Mother fluffer! That's my space! Not the website. And gives her hell for it. Ah, just beautiful, right? Look yeah, at that. I mean, I... reading reading her mind, you know. Yeah. He knows she wants this two CS. Walks away ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, it's just and just murders her. You know, sends her home, sends her packing. And now this LeBlanc is thinking, should I have flashed for this kill bot lane? I don't know, man. I can't fucking lane. And just to show you how him being composed and making the most out of the situation, like he, he pinged twice, you know, he's not saying like, don't int team, oh, my team always ints me. And he's not whining like a bitch, no, he just says, all right, fuck you, like, all yeah. right, bro. You want to go flash bot lane? No, suffer. Yeah, now you, now you don't have flash, you don't have defense spell, I can do what I want. He's just, he literally, like, she's full HP, by the way, pretty much, right? Like, she's 80% HP, comes back to lane, can't lane, can't play the game. One mistake, walking this way. And she really wants to because she's bleeding gold. She was bleeding gold when she was on bot and she's still bleeding gold. We're still bad. She really wants to come back and play the game. And he says no. No whining. No whining. Just good gameplay. Like, obviously, he'll whine if his team is too weak. Like, there's, there's obviously whining in high yellow. Don't misunderstand. Whining is fine. Okay, if you need to whine, whine. I don't, I'm not saying. I'm just saying when you have control and you can punish someone for doing something... Right, if I do the math right now, right, let's go back to when when, when she showed, when, when they both based, right? I'm going to go back to when they both based. And uh, we press that here, so uh, right about here, 31 to 56, right? So let's remember that, 31 to 56, to right here. When he presses tab, I'll press tab. Eee, oh, he's too fast. There we go, caught him. Uh, 35, that's 4 CS, right? And 56 to 66, how much is 10 CS worth, roughly? Assuming you gold. kill the cannon wave. 300 gold. 10? No, too much. 21 for a melee creep, 14 for a range creep. So, the average? Uh, is that 18? 17, 18, right? Yeah. Somewhere there. So, um, with the cannon creep, it goes a bit up, but the point is, is, usually we can say three waves is roughly, uh, with, with a cannon wave included, 400 gold, right? So, 10 CS is, um... A little more than half of that, so about 200 gold, yes? Yeah. So, if you consider the amount of XP he's also denied, that one kill she got, pretty much equal. Yeah. It's, right? Yeah. In fact, you'd even argue it's worse, because early on, XP is more valuable than gold. Yeah, I mean... Because experience early game. Uh, one level equals 600 and something, I like to say 600, roughly 600 gold worth of stats. Okay? So... Uh, with that in mind, would you say that the exchange LeBlanc made was worth it? No. No. I mean, she she has no control mid. Uh, like, 
Yeah. She's fucked, right? Yeah, she has to base again. Fucked. Like she has yeah. to base. She roam bot. She she based roam bot has to base again after getting four CS. She's fucked. All I'm trying to get you is to think about this, okay? I'm I'm just trying to help you think about it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong to roam bot. I'm just think about what you lose, think about what you gain, and think about Oriana didn't go in this situation. Didn't go fucking send it bot lane to go five v five with Oriana. Nah, he he sees LeBlanc mid, insta pushes mid. No hesitation. He's just blowing up this wave. You know, just push, just push it as fast as he can. Yeah, he's trying to get every CS he can. Sure, but he's as fast as possible. He misses two CS. You know, sucks that he misses two CS. It's Chovin. He's missing CS. You know how rare that is, right? Point is, is he's pushing as fast as he can. Did he use his spells optimally? Neither. But the point is, is the habit is what matters. He's pushing ASAP so that he can go so, so goes on blank, which is exactly what he does. Now be mindful if you are not confident in like outplaying the situation. Wukong can come piss on your cornflakes, so be mindful. Uh, let me double check if Wukong is healthy enough to do that. Let me check. Wukong seemed to be level 6 and healthy, so I actually don't know what Wukong did here to not relieve his mid laner. Because if I was reviewing jungle right now, I'd be saying, What the fuck? Why is Wukong not helping LeBlanc re-enter mid? You are a noob. So, yeah. to be fair with you, Wukong's being a noob. If he's level 6 right now, which he just dinged, and has Cyclone, he should be helping his LeBlanc catch the wave after this wrong bot. But, Wukong's being a noob, so report Wukong. Uh, however, if you're LeBlanc right now and you're saying, look, report Wukong, you're also an idiot, so... Anyway, you get the point. Yeah. yeah. She got fisted. I... She actually, in terms of getting that kill, pretty much went negative, because the wave state is still bad. However, out of getting that kill, uh, we, we can argue, at least Chobi equalized. Right, at least just by managing his wave, smart, which is just pushing in the wave and zoning her. That's not exactly rocket science. No. But he equalized just from doing that. Notice that once, right now, he's he's not going to use W as much to poke because he's being mindful of his um, like he's only going to W when he knows his Q is going to connect. Right. So yeah. again. A little question, you know, just to bring it up here. He Q's here, right? Yep. And he doesn't W, right? Because the distance between uh, the distance between this is going to be longer than the distance from what he does this. next. Yeah, yeah. the short range. Yeah. So he 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 feels more confident to W here because he knows it's going to hit. Yeah, because I mean, he's he, being really he's being really mindful of his mana. Same thing here. He he just queued initially to put the ball here. And then he's using W to harass when it hits. I mean, I wouldn't be using W as much, but obviously Chovy's a better player than me, so maybe he knows that, you know, he can just W for poke. And, like, I mean, just a fucking giga chad, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you love to see it, you know? It doesn't hit, doesn't, like, he just knows, you know? He just goes for the kill in here. You know, nice little play. He moves his champion well, just solid stuff. Creep auto kills him. No, it doesn't. Beautiful stuff. I mean, again, he, he wasn't panicking there, you know? He didn't insta-flash the second he could, you know? First, he walks a little bit. And then he realizes, ah, this next auto will kill me. But you notice how he's like, he's not panicking. He knows Pike needs two autos here. One, now I flash. He didn't, he wasn't mashing flash out of the stun. Like right now, he's not like flash, 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 and flashes now, you know? He's yeah. waiting. Now he realizes it's still worth flashing. I can survive. Alternatively, if he dies here to the ignite, he would just put, like, just throw his hands up, you know? Like, ah, oh, fuck it, you got me. No, Walter White style, you got me. Ooh. But, saves his life, wonderfully played, and obviously ditches, doesn't care how the wave is. Yeah, he's looking at it, and like, he'll, he'll have a smile on his face right now. Like, I'll, I'll tell you right now, when he looks at the wave here, when he moves his camera up right now, this is the two po possible reactions, right? First possible reaction, smiley face, the wave is good. Second possible reaction, sad face, the wave is bad. Either way, he's gonna recall, okay? When he's sad face, he's not gonna be like, I need to fix the wave! Nah, fuck that, I sort of killed my opponent, I'm out, bye. And that's it. That's it. He knows, like, right there. He's not hesitating. He didn't really, like, and this is what, this is something that you have a habit of doing, okay? This is a habit that you have, okay? This is what you were doing in-game. You would see a situation, and you would change your mind. So right now, he's saying I'm basing no matter what, right? Yeah. And then he's looking at the situation, and this is what you do, okay? You, what you do is, like, oh, the, the wave, let's say, like, oh, the wave is good. And then you will change your mind, and you'll suddenly do something else. Right. He knows he's basing no matter what here, and the information he's gathering just helps him make a better decision. It is not to change his mind. You, could, you can't tell me he knew he will survive with 5 HP? No, but he knows that at least he's getting a 1 for 1. You know, like, right there, he took a risk, because he knows he's going to 1 for 1 with LeBlanc, most likely. He's looking for a solo kill. In fact, if LeBlanc survives there and gets outplayed, I'd still think that's not a bad decision he made, because Pi came in really clutch. I'm not saying he knew that he was going to survive. I said that once he, like, once he made this judgment call that he could flash and survive, 
based on the situation he was in. And maybe he would die there, you know? Maybe the minion auto finishes him off. But the point is, he he was waiting until the very last moment to flash. He didn't panic flash. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. He took a moment to take in, you know? And again, I can't say whether he looked at Ignite and saw, like, maybe this guy is that insane that in this situation, in this fucking pike stun, his eyes are going down to his fucking debuff bar and he's looking at the duration of Ignite. Right now, if you're telling me that right now he looked like... so. I can't say that. I don't know. I don't know him. I haven't worked with him. So I can't say right now, in this time, he's looking at Ignite right now to determine how many ticks there are left before he needs to flash. But I can say right now is that he didn't insta-flash right now after this time because he's wait like he's judging the situation. So again, maybe he did. Maybe in this time, he looked at the Ignite. He knows, oh, only one tick left. I'm flashing. I don't know. He could be that insane. All I'm saying is I don't do that. Also, it's a vibe thing, you know? I'll be honest with you. Like I, I don't look at the debuff, but I have a good vibe of how much damage Ignite does. You know, it's like... You feel it. Anyway, yeah. decides to go refillable potion instead of mana crystal because health is more valuable than mana when you have this large of a mana pool. And uh, yeah, you could go mana crystal there, but refillable is a really gold efficient item. Why? Because uh, you, you know? constantly refill it. I mean, you don't have to keep buying potions. It, First it, reason. Second reason? Uh, you get two of them. Second reason, second reason is it costs 150 gold. Yeah. And it sells for, not, for 60. Oh. Okay. So you're getting 200 health. Four? How much? Let's do math. Again, 200 health for... Uh, How much? What is that? Yeah, 90 gold. 90 gold. This is why it's really efficient. And this is the bare minimum. The bare minimum. Once you refill it once, you do it times two. You get 400 health for 90 gold. And that, my friends, is a Billy Mays approved deal. <laughs> Very good business. Now, in this situation where he's walking up like that, why is he not worried about Wukong? Let's go see. He's walking out of base. Let's look at the meter map. Should he be? Wukong's dead right now, so... Is he? I can't see. Oh, yeah. Wukong yeah. died 20 seconds ago. So let's assume Wukong is alive right now. He's probably saying if Wukong wants to fucking run it down into, into the bot river to gank me right now, I honor him. Because he could. Wukong gonna run straight out of base to go gank him, but he's saying, like, he probably won't. And I think that's usually the right assessment. Usually Jungles will run to a camp after dying and do the camp and then decide what to do as they're doing the camp. Rarely a Jungle is just gonna beeline to gank someone um, if the lane is neutral, right? Like, if you're fighting to the death and a, and a jungler died in that fight to the death, and then when he respawns and he's back on the map, you're still fighting to the death, oh yeah, he's coming to kill you. But, um, if it's like a very stale situation, he's not going to assume that Orianna's going to start suddenly fist fighting out of nowhere. So, I I'm guessing that's it. And then once he, you know, like, takes the space and then stops taking the space. And notice, right? He's saying Wukong won't come. Now he's like, oh, okay. I took space. He probably will try to gank me now. Because Wukong's done one or two camps and now he's going to look for it, right? So, gotcha. immediately starts uh, playing safe again. Alright, let's go back. Right, he's considering recalling. Right, he wants to recall here. One v one, he would recall here. Why? Um, this is a little bit of a like. This is Halo. I'm just bringing this up so you can think about it. But basically, enemy top laner is going to come catch this wave because LeBlanc went to catch top, which means that he doesn't want to get stuck in lane against enemy top laner with bad resources because he's half mana and he has lost chapter uh, in recall, which means that he for one v one you would always recall here if you're one v one because you crash the wave and then now you're going to spend your resources. Right, you're going to spend your gold, which is mm -hmm. your gold resource. You're going to spend it and you're going to get your mana back. However, he realizes we're doing an objective, so I'm going to cancel my base and help my jungler do the objective, secure it, basically, right? Which is a very good habit. Um, helping your jungler secure an objective is good. Now, sometimes you're going to have to make the call, I can't come here, right? Like, sometimes you're going to have to make the call, like, I can't hover for this Herald, otherwise I'm going to get canceled on my recall and get stuck in lane forever. But he has TP, so he's saying, worst case, I'm going to get put in a tough spot against Kale, and I'm going to have to TP back. Now, it is Kale, so there's no real threat, but maybe you're playing against a more aggressive top laner that is scarier to lane against 1v1 as a control mage. Who knows? Either way, you'll notice he's just going to try and crash. Like, he's just going to neutralize the wave and base TP, basically, because he still wants to get that refresh off, right? So, uh, joke, he's going to get a blue buff, so he doesn't need to. But I'm saying that, like, right now, he's looking for a refill. You know, he wants to either refill by base TPing, or he wants to refill by getting a blue buff, and that's going to sustain his mana for a while, so... Uh, either way is possible. Looks at the situation top, sees where Wukong is, sees where Wukong is. What is the result? Pushes up and starts caking. Nom 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 nom. All my space again, right? Yeah. 
space monster that instead of the cookie monster we have the space monster and look at this <laughs> being a little a little piece of shit you know that's how i like calling it you know you're, you're being a little like he, he keeps it he throws his ball how many times does he throw his ball i'm gonna pause right now how many times does he throw his ball just forward and hit nothing uh i think two or three times correct two or three times roughly right so my point is he just throws his q and he's just like all right bro <laughs> Same thing against Kale, by the way. You notice how he QW'd and then walked backwards? You notice? How many yeah. times did he walk back and forth? Just gonna... These things apply to every matchup, every champion, every situation. They're never wrong, okay? They're always right. You throw your spells and walk away, they're always right. And this is what I call being a little piece of shit, you know? You put the ball so far, it's like... <laughs> you literally can't come into the lane. Haha. <laughs> and look at him. Kale is just... This is Kale right now, okay? You see this melee creep right here? You see this melee creep? And she's yeah. this, okay? This is Kale. Yeah. I can't just, farm. Just sad. Yeah, sad I mean, face. Now this wouldn't. Uh, he couldn't be doing this to like a, a Camille or a Jace, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it depends how good you are. <laughs> I mean, true. If you if you're going to dodge Camille, you can do this. If you're going to get hit by Camille, you are going to die. So yeah. the, the real reason is most people will say, "No, nah, I'm not going to do it." Because if I get hit, I die. But some of these players, and honestly, this little guy is, I mean, maybe he's not little, but this guy is one of these guys that says, oh, I'm down. I'll take that risk. Obviously, I'm not one of them. I'll be like, hell no. But some players are like, <laughs> Camille? I've never seen a Camille hit me. Yeah. Look at her. I just, just yeah, I can't do anything. Sad face. I can't farm. Lose his cannon, too. <laughs> He tried to get the XP, you know, yeah. he tried. But Chovy said no. So, I guess that's something I, I am lacking knowledge on. How far away do champions start losing XP on uh, minions? <sighs> Pretty much the screen, right? So your reign, like, basically, I would say, if this creep XP, you'd have to be, like, here. So pretty much your screen. Like, he's standing on top of the creep, right? So he, this is like, roughly how much vision he gets. Like, pretty much okay. a screen away. Okay. I don't know the exact number. I'll be fair with you. I consider it to be like a screen away. Gotcha. Like right now, Kale in this area will get XP for this range creep. But a little bit further back and she won't. Gotcha. So right now here, she won't get it. But he like here she will get it. Here she won't get it. Yes. No. Gotcha. Weird end. Whatever. Sure. Uh, roughly, okay. Uh, generally speaking, just a screen away. Another thing, I wanted to just mention this, um, pops the spot immediately. If you're playing a control mage, staying at full health is just beneficial. You have no reason to bait anyone to all in you because all in is the way you lose. Yeah. You're, right? Yeah, I mean, as a control mage, you're basically trying to poke people low until you can use your, you know... You oh, yeah, you can look for an all in, right? Whereas yeah. with melee champs, second wind, Doran shield, maybe you have some healing mechanics that heal you more when you're low. The point is, uh, they like to be low. Ariana, control mages, just pop your pots early. Obviously, you want to be efficient with them and, like, not waste health. Like, so don't pop them at f when you have 50 health, minus 50 health. Don't use it and lose 50 health. But, basically, when you're 90% and you have 1,600 health like he does right now, uh, you can use it because that's uh, 160 health minus. Same thing here. Look at this, how crisp his decision-making is, you know? Sake. He said, I'm going to crash this wave, I'm going to hit this for a play, and I'm going to go recall. That's it. You know? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Crashes the wave, takes the plate, goes to recall. Changes his plan, that last hit the ward because he's basing on a ward, but, again, doesn't change his plan, no hesitation, just boom, boom, boom. He's very clear in what he's doing, and when we review Revolta, which is still coming, by the way, don't misunderstand, you are going to, that's the thing, I'm not going, I'm going to rail you if you don't, like, I'm going to absolutely roast you, is the word I was looking for, if you are unable to yourself, but trust me, after this Vault review, you will see yourself play and you'll realize... Holy shit, you know? Yeah. The difference is massive. For sure. No, I can already, I mean, I can definitely already awesome. see it. Uh, his spacing is just uh, <laughs> significantly better. He's controlling lane so much better. He's uh, getting useful information for his team and himself in situations where, like, I don't even think to do that. And it's fine. And it's not, I, honestly, it's not even that that I'm so much bothered by. Uh, you'll notice that the biggest thing you'll notice is when you make a decision, or like the thing is, is you don't make a decision. Yeah. So we're gonna rewatch that. So again, uh, honestly, you just farm kind of, just AFK farm. Again, good point. You got hit. You didn't actually block the E damage. Um, Actually, started lagging here a bit, but the, like either way, you were just AFK farming, so it's not a big yeah. deal. And we're gonna fix it like here. Yeah, it's back. 
So, um, uh, after like the first thing is right. So you were trying to crash this wave, right? Yeah. You can trade all. The, she can use all her spells on you, and you can still kill these creeps and then fight her because you have the minion wave advantage. So here you don't have to be so scared because here you're walking away when really yeah. you can actually even step in. Because gotcha. you see Jarvan bot lane, you don't have to be scared of him. And, like, these creeps are going to help you. So, in a matchup where, obviously, like, if this is a champion that can 100-0 you, um, like, for example, Kiana, uh, Zed, like, these type of assassins are very scary for this, right? Because they can 100-0 you right now. But uh, when you're playing against a control mage and you have the big wave advantage and they step into you like this, you can actually just hold your ground and just um, throw your spells at them and the wave and then just auto-attack them to death. Because you see, like, she, you took a pretty much even trade, right? Yeah. Either way, same thing here. Like, I want you to start focusing on blowing up this wave ASAP instead of poking her because you're trying to get a reset, right? Uh, now, if you want to stay in lane, you can, but the point is, like, it's not really that lucrative, I would say, to stay in the lane because uh, you just don't have the resources to really... You don't have enough mana to really kill her. Um, and again here, right? So here you're going to hesitate. First, you, you notice how here? Yeah. You hesitated? Chovy would have been right here, right now, recalling. Yep, and getting the back off. Exactly, which was your intent, which is why you pushed in the first place. And he would just buy tier plus whatever, right? Yep. Whether that's Amtome, Dark Seal, Boots, up to you. I'd say Amtome's probably better because you can afford it. But the point is, is you'd, you'd be doing that. Instead, you're like minimizing the amount of pressure you can have. Like you're reducing the amount of pressure you can put on her, even though her resources are way worse than yours. But if your plan is, like, for example, let's say your plan is, um, you know, I'm going to f wait and farm. So another thing here is note... Um, I need to, these are multiple concepts we're discussing at the same time. So let me just let me just break down the first one. First thing, why are you in better conditions than her? Uh, I have more health. Uh, she has was that one pot? I have one pot. Uh, I have more mana. Mana is about the same. Yeah. Health is the first advantage. What's the second advantage you have in this situation? I know this one is a trick question, so I don't mind if you'll miss it. But um, I'll give you the answer. I won't, you know, torture you too much. Your champion's yeah. just better at zero mana. Gotcha. Right? Is Lux at zero mana is less val. Like, Lux at zero mana has no passive that increases at auto attack damage. You at zero mana have this, right? Yeah. So your passive is better at zero mana than her. So when you're both on low resources, that it's in your advantage. Uh, Chad is also mentioning you have XP advantage, which uh, likely is true. Um, I don't know how many people died bot and how much XP she got for the roam, but you have a little bit of XP advantage true, which is also something to consider. However, um, I did not take that into consideration. So good, good on chat for pointing that out. The other thing is, like I mentioned, your champ is just better at low mana because you have extra damage on auto attacks and she doesn't. So that can be relevant. All right. Like I mentioned earlier, like here you use Q to CS and I don't want you to do this because your idea is to blow up the cannon wave. So this is like a, a wave management thing where it's like you need to be thinking about which wave you're going to blow up and then blow it up ASAP. So in, in this case, I really want you to, you know, you could even pick up the ball and then walk here and queue the whole wave or you can just queue the backline here. But I want you to start queuing the backline ASAP and not use any other spells because like I mentioned, right, you saw it with Chovy as well. He only used W when he absolutely, like when the wave was already dead. He was holding W the entire time because he wants to make sure he uses this spell as often as possible because this is the spell that's going to deal the most damage to the whole wave. Gotcha. So when you're low on resources, think about that. Either way, we got the wave crashed. We got a base DP off. Very good. Catch the wave. We slow push it back. Very good. Again, you want me to go over this, like the difference between freezing and slow pushing, or are you aware of uh, it? I'm just going to ask. So... <laughs> Here's here's where I start screwing up uh, my entire games is like I do concepts without fully understanding them. I do them because I I've seen it and I and mm -hmm. I know that it's good to do. But I can't explain why or what I'm doing. Okay, so um, I'm going to explain it quickly for you. Basically, um, if you have so I'm going to draw lines here. Okay, um, I know my drawing isn't too good and mid lane is a bit different from top lane, but I would say um, this is the neutral, right? This is neutral. Yep. Um, I'm like imagine like more of a straight line. Thank you. <laughs> um, either way, um, this is a straight like this is neutral. So this is when the wave comes in neutral. This is um on your side, and this is like you know closer to your side. I don't really have a term for it, but I would say these are the three spaces you should consider because basically, in order to freeze in this space, you would need plus uh three or four, right? So I would say. Plus four is always going to work. You need plus four creeps to freeze in this place. You need plus two or three to freeze in this space. Hard freeze. And then um, basically anywhere here is obviously like, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's his space, right? But yeah. the point is, is um, the closer your wave is to the tower, 
right? The more minions you're going to need to freeze because these minions are going to arrive earlier. And when this minion wave arrives earlier, that means they're going to start dealing damage to the minions that are here earlier. Right? Yep. So, the difference between slow pushing a wave and freezing a wave. A hard freeze would require you, if you're freezing it like here, right? Let's say, so, you're freezing it in this space, right? So, we have our two spaces here. This is space number one. This is space number two. If you want a hard, if you want a hard freeze in space number two, you're going to have to keep about four, three to four creeps alive, right? To hard freeze it. And hard freeze, a difference between a freeze and a hard freeze, for me, a hard freeze, it will never un unfreeze. You will permanently freeze the situation. For the rest of the game, as long as you keep four more creeps of theirs alive than yours, this will be a freeze. The reason why uh, I'm giving you two different spaces is because dragging these creeps, right? To drag these creeps into space number one, what do you have to do? You'd have to move up into their space. You'd have to almost play here, and then yeah. you're vulnerable. Yep. Which means I'm making this distinguishment so you can think about when can I freeze with two to three creeps and walk into their space, or when I cannot walk into this space. You can even freeze them here, literally. You could stand here and you're very safe and you can still freeze, but you need plus three or four, okay? I will say it's not exactly, like, whether it's three or four also depends on levels in the game, etc. So I can't, I'm not going to go into that too much because it's like, basically, if you have four, you're always going to freeze here. Always in this space. Always. Uh, if sometimes it's going to be freeze with three if you're behind in experience in the team. So if you didn't know, um, the levels of everyone in the game um, define uh, creep strength. So if enemy team is up in levels globally, so if you take all five champions and add up their levels and then compare that to all five champions on your team and add up their levels, that will define how strong the creeps are. Uh, there's also something about towers being dead that influences it, but I don't know how that works, so I'm not going to explain it. Actually, I have no idea. I've always just done the trick where I just look at the experience in the game, and that has worked wonders for me to freeze waves. Plus, like I said, uh, I just freeze in this space, so um, usually I just do plus four and a hard freeze. Now, a slow push basically means that eventually your wave is going to bounce, right? So in other words, a slow push rather than a freeze is eventually, because you've only got two creeps alive here, eventually your creeps arriving earlier is going to lead into a situation where they, as soon as they come from the nexus over and over again, so about two or three waves from now, you're going to have a bigger wave than they are. Yeah, I'll have a stacked wave. Basically. Yeah. You will have a stacked wave. And that is when, again, because you're freezing in this space, which is actually really close to your tower, the first risk that can happen from freezing here is that uh, one of these melee creeps will just waddle waddle into tower range, and then your freeze will get broken even quicker, or your slow push will stack faster, um, and you may not get a three-wave stack, or you might only get a two-wave stack. But it's fine to do this, just keep in mind what the difference is, right? So you notice how all these creeps, they're already hitting a creep, right? All of them, yep. literally. Yep. These creeps haven't even started yet. That's the difference, right? That is why you need more creeps here of the red team than of the blue team. And that is the difference between pushing and freezing. And the amount of creeps will determine how fast the wave bounces back. Yeah. Again, if you have four or more, it will freeze permanently. If you do not have four or more, it will bounce back eventually. And the speed at which it bounces back and the amount of creeps that you will have that survive the, the, the onslaught that is the creep ore... Um, <laughs> It will all depend on um, where you, you know, where you draw. Also, how high of a CS you CS at, right? Because if you if you're hitting a creep at this health, right? Yeah. Just to get a really nitpicky, right? If you're CSing a creep at this HP, right? How many minion autos is this? Mm, Do you know? A, if it's a melee, I think it's uh, two. Three. Two, two, two range creeps. Let's say it's two range creep attacks. So in other words, one melee plus one range creep attack. Right? If it's three range creep attacks, then you can wait for three range creep. That's why sometimes you'll notice the best players in the world actually not see us a creep quite yet. They'll, they'll wait. They'll wait until it's absolutely last HP. Like, one minion auto attack from dying, and then they last hit. Because your auto attacks do not equal minion auto attacks. So, just something to, you know, keep in mind. Think about um, if you're freezing a wave, try to last hit at the very last second possible. See? Like there, you see us at the very last second, you missed it, but that's the idea if you're freezing, right? Just to show you, uh, again, something to think about. Again, you can freeze with three, depending on minion wave experience, and also it depends on where you freeze it in the lane. And you could have four creeps and freeze in front of your tower, and half your wave could walk into the tower, and it's no longer a freeze either. Either way, you're kind of just farming. I like the sequence. I'm going to go over the sequence here where it's on gangs. So you actually like it. One thing I will say is keep your R for cancelling his Q. Because you R to push him off of you, which is fine. But the real threat is him actually pressing Q. So, like, let's say you play the same situation. And let's say he's basic attacking you. Like, who really cares that he's basic attacking you, right? Yeah. 
you you could save your R here to cancel his Q. Right now, you R his Q. You scot free without having to flash. Do you think if I had walked down and around, I could have saved flash? Maybe. Okay. I don't know who's coming, so I can't say. Yeah. Maybe someone's coming and coming to fist you, and then, oh, well, blood blows. You'll have a flash anyway. My point is, like, I think what you could definitely... Like, again, like, I think you played it fine, honestly. Uh, I would just say, think about saving your R to cancel someone's channeling spell. So, silence Q in this case. Did you notice here, what would the trophy done after the spell misses? Uh, he would have went up and poked, taken space, and tried to zone. Right. It. Especially with the mana nom, nom, difference. Nom, nom, nom. I mean, you know, like, you can't do he anything. He would be knowing all the space. Yeah. Very good. Mm -mm. Either bad, way, very good. I have a very bad habit, I think, of trying to take CS and poke at the same time. So I often save abilities for instances like that. Because I, in my brain, I'm thinking efficiency, but like I don't actually think that that's true. As with everything in League, there's always to some situations where it's good and some situations where it's bad, right? Mm-hmm. I just want you to think about it. I want you to take a moment and pause and think, should I have used my spell that way or not? That's my best advice. I'm not going to give you a cookie cutter answer because there isn't one. But uh, this is why review is powerful because you can just pause and think to yourself, next time I'm going to do that again. Did that feel good? And honestly, you can just do what felt good. You know, like, I don't mind. You're not at a point where you need to theory craft optimal gameplay. You can just do what works for you. I know Alessa's a big hater of it feels good, you know? Like, he hates that <laughs> argument, but I'm I'm fine with it. You know, if you do something, I, this just works for me. And then, all right, man, sure. It's something that you're going to have to, you know, like, as long as you think about it, you're going to be able to break the habit eventually. Yeah. But, you know, you did a much better job here, right? Clearing the wave. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And then here, like I mentioned, right? Here's another point where you kind of just... <laughs> This is your brain. Yeah, I'm, calculating, I'm just... calculating. You're getting stuck in the sauce, you know? Like, this is the sauce. Yeah. Mm, spaghetti, yeah. meatballs, whatever. Whereas your brain should be very clear. Boom! One big arrow straight to your nexus. We're recalling. We're out of here. Job's done. We got the wave. That, that was why we were here. You got stuck in the sauce, and uh, what did the sauce, where did the sauce end up getting you? Uh, uh, a delayed back. Staring down a full resources lux. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks. When we would have gotten a free recall. Yep. Another thing, yeah, someone also mentioned is you recall Envision very often. And again, you're going to fix that by just, you know, going out of your way to uh, be more... Uh, basically, because you're calculating that you should have recalled and then you change your mind and then you realize, oh, I should have recalled anyway. And then you end up doing it in Vision. Um, you'll fix that if you just recall. Like here, for example, this recall is fine, I think. I mean, if Lux is good, it will cancel you, but eh, whatever. She tried to. She was just too late. Yeah. Either way, um, you know, again, you mentioned this, but you said, you know, you can stand here. Well, you didn't do it, which means you don't know it well enough. And that's okay. I'm just reminding you, you can stand here or here or here or here. Anywhere here, basically. Uh, at the very last step, you can stand. Uh, and, you know, if you stand here or you stand here, those 0 0.2, 0 0.1 seconds, I don't care about. But I want you to at least be near the last step. Because right here, that's very far from here. Make sense? Yeah. This is two seconds. This to this is one, like, not even, like, a point two seconds. Get it? Yep. Awesome sauce. You can actually stand on the grass? Sure. All I'm saying is, if you know how far you can stand, you'll start experimenting with it, and trust me, you'll, you'll get to the sweet spot eventually. I just want you to think about it. Come back to lane. Again, we press E here, because why not? You can always E the Comet and Scorch as well, if you're playing Comet Scorch matchups. So, something to consider. She uses E. What do we do next time she uses E like that? What do we do? I'm sorry, what was the question? I was watching gameplay. <laughs> no, no worries. When, when she E's like this, right? Yeah. What do we do now? Her E's on cooldown. Uh, we can we, exchange with her. We go up and poke, yes. We start. We look space. for it, okay? We yeah. look for it, okay? If, we're still going to have to be mindful not to get caught by Q. But the point is, is now you can start her ease on CD, which means you can walk into her. Yes, you got hit by it, but that doesn't mean you can't reply, okay? Because the thing is, if you have this mindset of, like, I got hit by E, I can't walk up, what's going to happen? She's going to keep throwing them, and eventually you're going to die. <laughs> yeah. You have to trade back when her ease on CD, and if you got hit by it, that sucks, but 
still you have to look right so here you decide to, to push out the wave and then go for a, a response in the jungle which is good awesome sauce you said i don't know what jarvan is doing and i agree with you he's being a bit of a griefer fantastic stuff got a free blue buff and again right when we have blue buff and you dodgy next time i want to see this q come out here take a little bit more space with your champion you mr e as well i believe let me just instant rewind that but spell it out for me what are you doing next time she uses Z. what do you do i walk up look for i look for trade uh and i take space right when she uses q and the i should we stop looking we fucking do it, it. Yeah, <laughs> I, should, I should be hard i should be hard trading at this point exactly you should you should be like literally up her ass you know like yeah. just literally like yo you know chovy style you know put the yeah. q here and then put the q here you know like really make her suffer yeah when she, when she uses E, you should be reconsidering it. Yeah, I mean, she's she has no... Uh, I definitely should have been trading there. She had nothing she could do to me except for throw a shield at me and attack me. <laughs> yeah, and at last I checked, that's still pretty favorable for you. Yeah. Yeah, someone brings up a really good point. Um, obviously, having um, playing against champions like Gragas, Lux... Um, Playing against champions like Ragas and Lux, um, having them choose between you or the wave is also a really good way to um, avoid getting poked for free. Um, so yeah, something to note um, here, for example, when you initially got hit, you were on top of your wave, so she didn't have to choose. She was pushing and poke. So this one she just threw and that was free poke, so not bad. But the next one you're going to take for free, basically, because you're going to stand on top of your creeps. When you could be CSing from here as well, you know? Yeah. Like you're going to CS on top of your range creeps, but you could be CSing from here or from here. Ideally here, because she's hovering that side, so you want to be on the other side. But either way, you got hit. But the pull wave got hit, and you got hit when you you should you should make her choose. Either way, um, I'm gonna go ahead when your own bot here. I'm gonna do something for you, okay? <clears throat> Tell me the first time Chovy goes bot lane. I'm not looking at the screen, by the way. I don't need to. I know when the first time Izzy goes bot lane. Do you know when the first time Izzy goes bot lane? I don't think he does. <laughs> Absolutely correct. He does not roam. No. He just does stayed. he hover? Does he get vision? Does he yeah. make sure people can interact in bot lane? Yep. Yes, he does. But is he a champion that runs bot lane and fist fights 5v5, 4v4, 3v3? Not at this moment, no. No, he is not. He once he gets his mythic, sure. Once he goes bot lane to lane bot lane to farm bot lane, he will go bot lane. But in order to go PvP bot lane, and he's not interested until he's strong. This is control mage, okay? You don't like that? Pick another champion. I'm just being real with you. Pick Swine. Swine's great. You know, you played a lot of Swine. Swine's great at those fights. But again, why did he go bot lane here? It's not to go five v five. It is because he wants to go farm a bit, literally. Yep. Yeah. Big, big, big difference. Right? So keep that in mind. Yeah, you, I think... This is you, okay? Let's go fist fight, 5v5, woo! Yeah, not it. Not it. No, I should have stayed mid. Yeah, pretty much. And that's okay. Again, these mistakes you're going to make, and sometimes you're going to go here and get a quadra kill playing Control Mage. The, the question is, I want you to think about it, alright? I'm not going to say never do it. I'm going to say, think about it. This is what, right? Trophy had an extremely successful game, and by the way, if you didn't notice, this vault is uh, 14 minutes, so guess what's going to happen? FF15. FF! It was actually it. 15, 50. So 50 seconds later. But the point is, this guy never once roamed to help his team. He just absolutely monster fisted whoever came mid lane. And that is good enough for a control mage. Now, I will say specifically for control mages, um, stopping... One way of influencing the game is to stop your opponent from influencing the game, right? So if you're playing Orianna, you might not be able to go bot lane and stop something from happening, but you might be able to stop the enemy mid laner from doing that, and that is also influencing the game. Making the game an even numbered game, so for your bot lane, in this case you didn't do that, remember? Mm -hmm. Lux got to roam. Yep. And the fact that she got to roam at all, um, right, might not have been relevant this game, might be relevant next game. The point is, is like, you just want to avoid having her influence at all. Right? Yeah. So here she got the roam off. So just keep that in mind. Uh, one way to stop someone from influencing the game is also, by nature, stopping someone else's influence from spreading is influencing the game. Because instead of making a, a, a situation 4v5, you're making all situations 4v4. Yeah. And whether that wins you the game or not is not relevant. That's just the best you can do sometimes when you play champions that are weak early game like Orianna. 
Yeah, I think that um, me not being able, me not pressuring Lux in the situations where I should have been also made it so that it was easier for her to roam. She had such a huge health pool that I didn't touch. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, kind of felt mm -hmm. illegal. <laughs> That's okay. You'll, you'll like I said, right? Like so, when you're playing, especially when you're playing champions like Oriana, um, yeah, your poke doesn't do shit. You know, like you're gonna yeah. poke her once and it's gonna do this much, and then it's gonna do this much and this much. But you noticed, um, whittling down and being consistent in your trading pattern is eventually gonna help you, um, poke them out and you know choke them out. Uh, that said, when someone's longer range than you, it is harder to do. So you outrange LeBlanc, which is why that helped. Um, I'm happy to. And do you want to continue the review? I think this is like the most important part. So I'm gonna. I want to. Cut the review off here and watch a trophy or any vault of versus a champion that's higher range so i can work with you on that instead um would you prefer that i think that would be better than going into your mid-game stuff and then you focus on this for now and really work on your laning phase would that uh, be something that you're interested in yeah or would you I rather mean, go through the mid-game what do you uh, prefer i how illegal and uh throw up worthy were some of my movements and stuff in the okay and mid-game decision making so the thing is that you're just hesitating right like i said so yeah. right now what you, what should you be thinking pause after what you saw trovi do what should you be thinking just to give you context you're one wave off your item and you're gonna catch a cannon wave at your tower what should you be doing i should should be hard pushing this and then backing and getting my item exactly right so you shouldn't even be thinking about interacting here and look at what you do just to show you Let's count the amount of seconds when, when this wave dies and when you can recall and how long it takes you to actually do what you need to do. It's 1550. God damn. <laughs> You're still linking. Yeah. And now, like, at this point, I have to admit, like, around this point, it's too late, right? Now, if you, if you, now, if you base, you will lose CS mid, so now you have to stay. But the point is, is, like, uh, in those 13 seconds, like, you, you could have based and walked back out and lost almost nothing. And that's what yep. I want to get to, right? So, yeah. that hesitation is something that, uh, it's just so to work. And then now, you, you know, now you hover for a fight. All good, you know? Fuck it. Hover for a fight, never a bad thing. Always hover for your teammates. You end up getting a triple kill. Really good. Then... Uh, here, like I said, ba backing usually I would say just take a little bit of time to just walk this way. Alternatively, um, if you're not scared, in this case I didn't know, like I didn't know what the situation was, so I called to like leave because I don't know if Yasuo still has ult and like if Thresh Flash flays you and Yasuo ult, you're dead because he's fed as hell. So I just said like l let's just back off after it crashes. Like you crashed away if you don't stay for the local gold. If you can stay for the local gold, that does help, especially when you're behind in the game. But the point is like just take a little bit of an effort to walk here and recall. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean by backing off. Because recalling in vision, um, yeah, it's just generally not a good habit. No. People people can use that information to their advantage, and giving people information that they can use to their advantage is always good. Again, why don't you buy a health potion at this point? Because 150 HP for 50 gold is just really cost inefficient. Yeah. Compared to 200 HP for 90 gold, uh, that refreshes itself, right? So this is yep. refillable right here. If you ref refresh refill refillable once, you're getting way more gold effectiveness uh, than the health potion, which is a one-time use. Right, sure. so don't ever do that. And in general, just buying it, even buying a refillable is kind of whatever at this point. But you can, you know, I just, I just don't want to see you buy a health potion at this point. Uh, a refillable is fine if you want to. Like right now, you're chugging refillables for an extra two hundred health. I don't mind. Okay. Um, anything else you can do that I think I did that was pretty. I mean, in indecision. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty indecisive. I. I'd fully admit that. I I'd mean, say that's the number one thing, right? So the thing yeah. is, I can't really judge your decisions when you don't make any. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what I want you to do, I just want you to make a plan and then follow it, right? So here, for example, I already mentioned this, but if you're collapsing on someone, you can just walk this way, and then whether you cut them off here or you cut them off this way, you have more options. If you go this way, the way you went, you only have one one option, which is to cut them off here. Right. This is why I want you to, to take the more aggressive route. And obviously, when you're collapsing and you don't have the ability to take the aggressive route, that's considered to be a disadvantage, which is why uh, if you're, for example, responding to a play, generally speaking, the difference between responding to a play and making a play, uh, this is the this is the difference, right? Is how aggressive of a path you can take. In other words, how many options you have to get there and how you can respond to what the person or the fight is looking like, right? Yeah. So in this case, you're winning the fight. So in other words, you could maybe collapse this way. Or you could see that he's running the other way, so you can collapse the other way. Just like I mentioned think about the fact that you can uh, influence the pathing you take uh, the more space you take the more different paths you can take to get there and then here like i said like the game is really rough and honestly you're lucian's trolling so like 
I don't know if he's farming any waves. He's really just running around like he's actually trolling. So it's hard for me to judge wh which wave you need to defend. But usually the, the rule of thumb is the place that needs defending the most, uh, the quickest is the place you go to first. So in this case, you're going to have to go run back to your nexus in case Yasuo walks with this wave and he shows up on this wave. You're already going to be ready. You're going to want to be ready to defend this wave rather than yeah. see him on the wave when it's at your nexus, right? And then start defending your wave. Make sense? Yep. Awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then obviously uh, your team fight mechanics can be improved. But like I said, continue watching uh, Great Oriana players play and, and, and improve on, on the mechanics. I'll just give you a little bit of uh, feedback if I can. Because uh, here you play a fight. Uh, obviously good that you didn't uh, Sombrero with your ult, which is good. Um, and in general, like the enemy team is really fed. So you get caught by anything. You get kind of bulldozed by their fed Yasuo plus Jarvan. So it kind of makes sense. One thing I'll note, uh, communicate to drop a ward for your Alistar. If he doesn't do it, that's fine. You at least made him communicate. Because using you know, TPing here can be really dangerous if someone collapses on you, right? So I don't expect you to TP here. Uh, you could as well. Uh, obviously, if you're just like, fuck it, I just need to be here to zone this guy. Um, I didn't like shout at you or like say anything because I don't like doing it. It's just like right now, just a reminder, if you can tell us or put a pink here or a ward here or anything. If you're playing with Jarvan, you can TP on his flag. If you're playing with Oriana, uh, not Oriana, uh, Thresh, you can TP on his lantern. Yep, um, yeah, yeah. Or Tibbers maybe. The point is like, the habit of communicating it is what I want you to have, and then whether someone does it or not is none of your business. Anyway, here what should happen is the uh, Death Realm on Jarvan equals guaranteed Baron, so you don't have to worry about it getting stolen. But what you can do is communicate so you can be there and increase the odds that Baron is going to be for you, like, for your team, because you can look for the ball for where Jarvan is, and you can look to, you know, zone him, etc, etc. Alright, and then yeah, obviously this game's pretty screwed, so I don't mind at all. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fine. Keep in mind, you know, this is good that you do it. I don't know if you do it consciously. If you do, great. I'll just mention it. Uh, where you ult, the ball will push towards it, right? So this yep. is the shockwave, right? It yeah, pulls you... people into it. So yep. if you shockwave and you're chasing someone, don't shockwave in front of them because then the ball is going to push towards the ball and then you're going to just give them distance. Whereas I, you uh, could have pulled them in. I spent like, I don't know, two or three hours of practice tool practicing pushing people over walls with ulti, so... I mean, that's really spicy, I like it, I've never seen it, so honestly, I, I, that's quite spicy, I like it. But yes, you can TP on Thresh's Lantern. Um, yep. I think you can do Caitlyn, that. I think you do Caitlyn traps too. I don't know. I know you can do other traps, I actually don't know for Caitlyn trap. I know in Nidalee traps work, I know Jin traps work, I don't know about Caitlyn, but honestly, if you might have... You just made me think about it, which is a positive thing, so I appreciate that. So maybe I'm going to play with Caitlyn, and maybe it's going to make a difference. So I appreciate that. So yeah. again, you know, you're playing in Thresh, you have to, like, spike this hook. Like I said, right, you're playing against the hook champion, just think about it. If he flashes, I'm going to have to flash. The question is, is, like, how patient can I be? Because if Thresh flashes forward and you're too patient with your flash, I might just flay you into the asshole. Uh, alternatively, don't get, like, he flashes forward and then hooks here and you flash into it here. So what you want to do is... Uh, you, in, in your mind right now, you'll say, if he flashes, I flash. So you want to flash in a place where he can't catch you. So you're going to flash out of range of his flash. Don't yeah. let him flash in, aim his hook here, and you flash into it here. Just flash up away. Just yep. think about it. He baited you? It doesn't, it doesn't work with Caitlyn traps? Yeah, like I said, I don't know, and I didn't take his word for it. I would test it. But the point is, I'm thinking about it. I baited you? I said I think. Oh, well, there you go. I think. Good, you think. That's great. Let's see uh, the situation here. Let's see a little bit of your mechanics. So there you actually sombrero him out of range, which means it was harder to get an auto. Like, for example, here, if you uh, ulted him, not sombrero, if you ulted him towards you, maybe you could have, uh, um, maybe you could have got the QE auto off and then finished him off. Because um, obviously he got triumphed as you queued him. Maybe he wouldn't have, maybe he would have died. Either way, it doesn't matter. Honestly, the Nexus was exploding. Anyway. Yeah, I just want to go, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I just want to look against, like, Victor or um, Syndra. Um... If I can find it, if I can't, I'll just go for someone else because at the end of the day, other people will play it too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oriana, Syndra, or Victor. I'll try Syndra first because she's pretty high range. I'd say Syndra or versus Oriana is also the classic. Is he playing against the Syndra here? Oh, he is. Oh my god. We get a Oriana. Oh my god. We get a Chovy versus. We get a Chovy versus Showmaker of VOD. My goodness. We are eating good tonight. How how much better can it get, my friend? It does not get better. First thing, first thing I told you in this coaching session. What did I tell you? E. Ha. <laughs> 
and you'll see he's gonna dodge he's gonna try to but when he can't he'll press e so the first thing is you notice how he's fishing for it but he's not going for it and uh, he's what is the difference he's fishing for an auto to see if he can get it but he's not going to force the auto oh got him <laughs> see he doesn't use either she casts obviously he doesn't but my point is like he's looking where the q goes and then he's gonna e alt e insta cast it so if you don't use that key bind i recommend it see he dodged it this time but trust me if he didn't he would have pressed e ah what did he do he pressed e you love to see it he'd react so I'm just going to show you a bit of the early game here. I'm going to let it, let it run. And then uh, I'm going to go more in depth when it comes later to when he can actually reply to Cinder's range. Because right now he can't really. He's too weak early game. That's why in case you're wondering, I'm not going to break it down as much as I did the other VOD. Because all of the concepts that I was talking about already applied. But um, like, this one's interesting. Because like obviously uh, Syndra, like Syndra's walking into the space to try and get a stun. Which I actually think is kind of... I, I'm not a huge fan uh, of how shall I make her approach that. But hey, it's fine. All good. Two points in Q, because again, you're looking for max range Qs, and um, you don't QW when you max range Q, right? Like you're just fishing for it, and if you hit it, great. Otherwise, you don't mind. Nothing special. Now, in more longer range matchups, should I be going double point Q, or should I always be going double point Q? You should do two points Q if you can't. So the thing is, if you can QW, guarantee hitting it, and then get an auto attack in, it is better, right? Because the slow guarantees the auto, right? Right. If you can't get that extra auto, just put another point in Q, because it's just going to be more mana, like, it's going to be, you're going to be more mana efficient, basically. That's the thing. In matchups that are long range, you can't auto attack them to trade. Same thing here, right? I'm just going to refresh this. I know I'm in the middle of explaining a point, but I just wanted to show you, right? See, he tries to dodge, didn't dodge, presses E. Oh wow, Nuclear Inth and uh, Sheo, thank you so much for um, for hosting me, I really appreciate that. Dude, the BDS goats. Oh, BDS, man. Je t'aime. Anyway, um, yeah, my French is terrible, so <laughs> I've got some stuff that I can say. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, I appreciate that. The other concept I was trying to explain is basically, um, if you can force auto-attack trades, you can put points in W because then you can like auto and then QW them and then auto auto and then you can really squeeze in an all in basically. Right? Yeah. The difference between that and putting two points Q is like I can only fish with Q. Make sense? Yeah. So that's the difference between QW or uh, just killing Q. Uh, two points Q, sorry. I would say. That's my opinion. I'm not an Oriana expert. That's just how I've always done it when I played Oriana, which I was pretty bad. Mm mm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, BDS is in the finals. It's actually really impressive. For sure. I mean, they're, they're they great. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Very impressive stuff. I'm excited to see you on 100 Thieves, you know? <laughs> that's not happening. Uh, <laughs> most likely, I think. A lot of people are saying that's happening, but as far as I'm aware, that's not happening. Um... Either way, like I mentioned, just gonna bring it up again. He gets hit. He, he tries to dodge, notices he can't. Like he's going for CS. He's just gonna press E. Simple as that, right? Reacts to what's happening on the screen. Leaked? I mean, is it leaked? Like I, I, like I said, like I, I, as far as I'm aware, it's not. Everyone's saying it is. And honestly, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because like I don't want people not to reach out to me because they think it's happening. That's one of the scariest things I think that can happen to a pro player is like people not reaching out to me because they think something is happening when it's not happening. Like, I had the last message message me, like, oh, you have a team! Someone told me you have a team! And I'm like, well, uh, not that I know of. Yeah. So, you know, uh, try not to spread rumors about me being on a team when I'm not. We're on old items, man, holy shit. And still these concepts are relevant. How beautiful is that? But, That's like, yeah, I, I don't want people to spread rumors about me that are not confirmed. Like, you know, confirm with your sources. Because, uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. Either yeah. way, because he used Q here, he couldn't E to block the Q damage, so keep that in mind. But you notice, you know, the habit. See what they do when they throw the spell. What do they do when they throw the spells? Go ahead. Show me. Tell me. Sorry. Not show me. They, Tell me. They instantly start walking away. Because they've yes. done their damage. He dodges up. He dodges down. Right? Point is, they both dodge. They throw the spell. They dodge. They react to their opponent after throwing the spell. So, very basic habit. But doing it like the best in the world do it. Um, yeah. This is going to carry you really far. I'm not even joking, right? Like, this is an insane skill to have in lane. And especially the, the worse of a player you play against, the more damage you're going to get on them without being able to get replied on. But 
These guys do it when they're playing for world championships, right? Like, literally. Yeah. There, again, he doesn't E because he's replying. And I guess here he values having his ball out that in that place more than blocking damage with his E. Because keep in mind, your ball positioning can, can drop pressure, right? So he, he would rather have his ball out in front of him um, rather than uh, recall his ball in order to defend. So, again, he fishes there for QW. Um, he went for it. A lot some Mariano players won't do that because they think that W won't hit. Either way, he went for it. He's just going to cast E here to auto-attack trade and then gets absolutely uh, murdered by Syndra's combo. But, yeah. This matchup is considered to be pretty rough for Orianna. At least it used to be. I'm assuming that it's a bit better now because she got, um, you know, changed to scale more than early game. But the point is the concepts are exactly the same because she does outrange you. Um, not by too much, but her stuns outrange you significantly. And one thing to note, like, uh, if you can do this as well, it's really good. Is like, pay attention to how Showmaker is playing the lane and, like, the concept he's trying to imply. So, uh, apply, sorry. So, notice how he's never really gone for a stun and then... Um, W'd Oriana. He's only gone for trades where he's he, he cues Oriana. He never stunned Oriana outside of his own range. He always went for cues, like Q hits Q stun. He never went for uh, QE max range and then W. And maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's right. It's just something to think about, right? Um, this is one of the big things when you're reviewing VODs. Is like as I'm watching this VOD, I am trying to understand what Showmaker is doing too to get a better understanding of what what Syndra does in this matchup. Again, just you know, showing you. Uh, I explained this with you, the difference between a slow push and a fast push. And this is the thing, and I'm going to show you this situation here, is like, this is the, the real reason why dodging your spells is so important, right? Like, you notice how, like, sorry, moving backwards while using your spells is really important. You notice how he's throwing, he's moving backwards as he's throwing his spells. He actually sidesteps the spell really smoothly, and had he not been moving backwards, he would have opened himself up to a trade back from Oriana. So, again, just to rehash that. Simple but important concept. Now Oriana queues on CD. What does Showmaker do? Nom nom nom. Gets actually shockwave, so that was a spicy reply. Um, just wants to get the recall in, it seems. Just reset the wave and get a chunk. Um, maybe he'll recall here. I'm actually not sure. His resources are quite low, so it would make sense to just recall. So he actually just goes to that adaptation and, uh, I mean, it caught me off guard, actually, but nice, nicely done. You know, it just says, you know what? I'm going to start bleeding bleeding in this matchup. So instead of suffering in this matchup and getting a recall, a bad recall later, I'm going to use my ult as a resource to get a reset. Victor does this really well. Oriana clearly um, does it pretty well too. In this case, Chovy goes through the strategy and he's just going to recall here in neutral. And keep in mind is like, look at where the wave is when he makes this decision, okay? It just spawned, which means that he has the time to recall and then walk all the way back before, uh, to catch most of the wave. And you'll see this. Um, but he basically said on the fresh wave, I'm going to, like, in his mind, he said on a fresh wave, I'm going to ult and reset, right? Yeah. And uh, what I mean by fresh wave is like, as it crashes, I'm going to blow it up. And, um, just to really show you the whole sequence, this is why he also froze the minion on his side. So he could, in this neutral wave, like, why did he freeze the minion here? Or not freeze, why did he pull the minion here? It's so that the wave would be close enough that he can do this comfortably without having to stick his neck out and risk getting ganked. My cats are fist fighting each other. All right. <laughs> beautiful stuff very nice very nice stuff so we're gonna walk back to lane and you'll see if Cinder stays here and pushes out this wave he goes from match base so actually you know like they're really high level players so you know just to break down why do they match base you wanna have a gander do you wanna take a do you wanna take the opportunity to explain to me why they match bases here yeah so uh, I mean I would guess I would do this for tempo. Uh, if my laner backs before I do, comes back with items, and I get trapped, I'm at a disadvantage. So I want to be able to match their advantage. Okay. So the first thing is, is that wouldn't be the case. Syndra would crush this wave before Oriana gets back. So I've just debunked your argument. You're not going to be at a disadvantage. Syndra has already killed this wave before Oriana gets back. So you're not at a disadvantage. Why did... I'll ask you again. So why... It's not this. It's not tempo. This is not the reason. It's not like, like, for the people talking about competitive, it's not for Herald either, because you can push this way of a Syndra and still base in time for Herald. So it's not a Herald either. Why did you do this? Um, you can you can also tell me you don't have an idea. I don't mind. I mean, I, I have ideas. I, I'll just be wrong. I mean... Uh, sure, go ahead. Item advantage. Right. Uh... No, because again, you're not interacting with your lane opponent, right? You're not yeah. interacting with your lane. So Syndra can push this way without Oriana ever touching her. Cannon wave? Not true. Because Syndra can one-shot a cannon wave at level 7 right now. She can one-shot this wave before Oriana ever gets to touch her. Force their TP? There's no TPs involved. Both the mid laners have already TP'd. How applicable is this to solo queue? Well, I'll let you, you'll be able to decide that for yourself when I tell you the answer. Want to take another guess? I'm out of ideas. Let's you will it. not allow your opponent to influence the game. Syndra doing this means Oriana will never get a tempo to move. 
Because if right now Cinder crashes this wave in bases, what's going to happen on the next wave? Gonna be frozen. I mean, it's gonna be pushed no. in, right? Oriana will be first on that wave because the same thing that Oriana did, Cinder is doing, but one wave later, right? So, right. what is happening here? Oriana blows up this wave and recalls, comes back to lane. Now, this wave is crashing. As this wave is crashing, Oriana will catch the wave and then she will be first on the next wave. So, what's gonna happen right now is this wave she's catching on her turret, Cinder is in base right now and walking back. What is gonna happen with this next wave? Cinder will be late on this wave, so Oriana will get to touch it first. Oriana touches the wave first. In other words, she will push the wave. She pushes the wave, which means she can move somewhere. In other words, influence. Matching recall means no influence from him is allowed. Because Cinder is about to show up and stop her from influencing the game. So, is this something that is relevant for solo queue? Think about it. If you are playing versus Kiana and Kiana blows up your wave for her HP bar, and instead of going for plus one wave and a plate, maybe match her recall and stop her from moving. But this is the reason why Syndra base is there. In my opinion, okay? I did not read his mind. This is the value I see of match base. All right? Syndra actually shows up pretty late. Oh, he went to get blue buff. That's why he's late. He said tempo. Isn't that what you're describing? Tempo is something that, like, the thing is, so tempo is something that's like, I hate using the word tempo if I can avoid it. Because at the end of the day, i rather say... Syndra wants to stop Oriana from influencing the game rather than break her... Like, what, what do you mean by tempo? Like, what do you mean tempo? What does tempo mean? They're both control mages. What the fuck is tempo in a control mage matchup? Like, what are they gonna do? Go hit Herald? Go fucking roam bot lane and do something? Like, tempo encompasses everything. Therefore, it encompasses nothing. It's not specific enough, it right? Is. For me. That's why I don't like using tempo unless I absolutely have to. Because it's a concept that people assume that everyone understands, but it, it's so broad. That, like, what does it actually mean? Define it for me. Yeah, I, I guess the uh, lane priority might be better. Sure, I already I prefer priority over tempo as a word. The thing is, it's like saying like, oh, this guy has tempo on me for this objective. It's it's clear, right? In other words, he's going to be there first. Yeah. But telling me like, yeah, maybe you're not wrong, right? Like, maybe you're not wrong. Syndra bases to match tempo with Oriana. Yeah, true. But what the fuck does that mean? Like, he's matched tempo. What the fuck does that mean in a control mage matchup? In my, in my mind, it means he's matching Oriana to stop her from getting any vision for free, to stop her from getting any information for free. Like, in other words, her influence, because I think that defines it much better. Now, don't misunderstand me. I do think um, you can say match tempo, and if someone understands what you're saying, that's fine. I, I said it's not tempo specifically, because tempo does not mean the same thing as influence to me. Um, right? So if, if, if I say this guy has tempo on me, that does, like I hope, like I am assuming people don't think oh, this guy's going to go ward somewhere, or he's going to go ping somewhere, or he's going to go roam somewhere. Like, that's not what tempo is, right? Roaming and putting wards, you don't say that. This guy has tempo on me doesn't mean this guy's going to go ward somewhere. No, it means he's going to be somewhere before I am. And I think that is why Syndra matched base there, to stop that from happening, to stop Oriana from right now. Because look, what happened in the end, right? Syndra pushed away first, came to the lane first, pushed away first. What does it mean? Oriana can't go anywhere. Oriana can't put this, this pink ward she bought, she can't put it anywhere, because Syndra pushes the wave and takes the space first. This is why I think he recalled and matched Oriana. Again, I can't go interview Ari uh, uh, Showmaker to ask him why he did something three years ago. Um, <laughs> and I'm not interested in it either. I don't have to. This is just what I assume, and I think it's a very sound concept. You see, like for example, like he went to ward. He got a strong reward. Now, we have to be happy with putting a, a, a lazy pink um, rather than having the good pixel pink, because, again, we were there first. By influence, you mean in the driver's seat? Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be an aggressive play. Like I said, warding is not being in the driver. Like warding first is not being in the driver's seat. Just being the f like influence literally just means taking space for me. What you do with that space entirely depends on the situation. Anyway, let's look at the fight and see how they play. Obviously, really well played. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna break down um, what he's doing. Right? What is he accomplishing by playing here in this space? Uh, so he's hugging wall. It's going to make it hard to anybody to really focus him. He's far away from the fight. He also gets in range to stop Genalty and Syndra from doing backline damage right okay. away. Awesome. All right. So you're not wrong. I just want to, you're right. I just want to specify this wall is safe because it's farthest away from them. Right. So Kennen has to come all the way here is the first reason, right? That's diagonally pretty damn far away. So yeah. the people that will threaten him, these people, 
he's splitting up. Uh, he's basically as far as possible. The second thing is splitting up, right? So he's not stacking. So he's making sure that when Syndra does throw her CC here, by the way, this ball, the shock blast looks <laughs> kind of weird. I don't know. Um, anyway, the other thing he's not stacking. So he could be playing here also if Caitlyn plays here. But the point is, is um, because these people here, and they're also playing a full range comp, right? Literally all five champions are ranged. Um, he's playing... Um, He's playing in a way where he's staying, keeping a safe distance from 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 Leona and stuff. But he's also keeping a. He's also staying away from his teammates because he don't don't want to stack. He doesn't want to make Syndra stun even more valuable. Because look, these two stacked, they both got stunned. Lulu, Caitlyn, and Oriana now have the ability to reply because they didn't stack. Imagine like there was one more person stacked here. This fight would look suddenly much worse. Yeah, especially with Leo going on top of them. I mean, it's just stacking CC bodies. Right. Same thing here. Like, what are they doing? Right. Like. He's he's not going into the Kindred ult, right? Like, he doesn't need to, right. right? They're holding their formation. You notice how, like, even the Caitlyn, for example, like, Caitlyn messed up. Caitlyn didn't need to be this far up, right? Caitlyn could have been hitting from here, right? Yeah. Why does it bite them in the ass? Because when Kenan flashes in here, um, Caitlyn's just going to be in a worse position. See? Um, didn't end up mattering because you could just net and, and, like, be safe, but um, just something to think about. I just want you to think about um, his his positioning relative to the enemy team. He's taking a safe distance away from the front line, so he's making sure Oriana, uh, Leona can't Emi, and he's splitting away from her, his teammates so that if Syndra does stun him, um, his teammates can help him go on Leona. So let's go back to when Syndra throws her stun, just to throw just to clarify this, because Syndra threw her stun and they had to go on Kindred, right? Now, what if they stun Oriana is the question, the first question I want to ask you. So in this case, uh, obviously Kindred is trying to somewhat bait to disengage, so the stun goes on him. But let's say this ball that was thrown here was actually a stun and it was aimed at Oriana, then he would have been first and foremost, uh, he's getting information, and in the meanwhile he's getting info, uh, Leona's too far away, that's the first thing, and the second thing, if Leona's in range, if he's the only champion that gets stunned here, um, all of these homies will help him out. Yeah. So keep that in mind, two things. If if he's stacking with his homies and they all get stunned together, then obviously it's just going to be a clusterfuck. And then obviously really nicely done to interrupt the gin ult and just make it harder for the backline to hit because they all get slowed, so... Uh, just well played, right? So you see, like, he replies when someone else goes on him, but it's a losing fight, so he's not going to hold his ground. The mindset is definitely run, and that's also the call in the comms. All right, I'm going to cut it short here because, I mean, actually, I'll, I'll go over his mid-game a little bit, but I'll cut short the laning phase review here because, obviously, I don't want to overload uh, information on decision-making and stuff, and I can break down everything, but honestly, I don't... I. I don't want to, I really want the focus of this to be the laning phase stuff I want you to work on. Um, yes, I will go over some of this mid-game decision making to help you give an example of what really strong decision making is in the mid-game. Um, but I don't want to, you know, tunnel vision on more laning plays because I really want you to focus on what we've worked on, which is, you know, spacing, using the spells well. Um, and then, you know, looking at what your opponent does and replying accordingly. And again, I don't expect your mechanics to look as good as his. Don't misunderstand me. My mechanics don't look as nearly as good as this guy on Oriana. But the concepts that he's implying, I'm trying to employ when I play Oriana. And that's what matters. When I play Victor, I do the same thing. When I play Syndra, I do the same thing. And that's what matters, right? It's Control Mage. It's all relevant to Control Mage. How that looks like and the sequence in which you press your spells, you're going to have to research and practice and practice tool. Yeah, what I'm noticing... Uh... And like instantly is how long he's actually staying just in a lane and not moving around despite what is happening like with his team and everything he's just mm -hmm. he is power farming and just trying to get pressure wherever he's at in certain areas i mean so one thing one thing i will say is toby can have a tendency to farm a little bit too much so maybe you don't farm as much as he does but um it is good to be a control mage and farm a lot that cannot be denied. Aiming for 10, 11 CS per minute minimum is great. If you have 12, 13 like he does, then fantastic. But obviously, do go places where you can go, right? If you can go ward somewhere, do go ward somewhere. That is the general idea. Let's look at his positioning in the team fight. actually. Sorry, I'll break it down for you. So he's in the back. He's basically ready to support people. He uses his tools to zone Leona and make it harder for her to look for E. She has to blow her R first. Um, it also makes it harder for to get in range to E, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. And again, in this case, he's farming mid lane a lot, but if you're doing this top lane, same concept, right? 
like we're ha they're having their ad go top lane to, to go farm top lane and he's just sitting mid and farming mid but if you're having just your if you're just having your ad go mid and you're going top it's the same sh same shit you know mm -hmm. doesn't really matter um all right uses his ult to wave clear all right makes sense you know they used herald so he uses his ult to wave clear very reasonable stuff now again his positioning let's have a look at it actually let's see PW's the wave, then runs away. Same concept, right? Throw out your spells, run away. Very simple stuff. I mean, obviously, they're kind of getting railed on the map. I mean, they're playing against Damwon at their best, so not, not, not a surprise. I'll be fair with you. Um, they were really good. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I played against them. Um, they were really good. So yeah, honestly, not much has been happening. This guy's just been farming, but that happens all in competitive games. So I will say, in order for getting info on how to carry a game, I will say competitive games aren't great to review because um, a lot of the decision making that you'll see pro players making competitive play um, are not the same as in solo queue. Past laning phase, however, for the first 12 to 14 minutes, I would say on average, uh, pretty much solo queue and competitive play are pretty much identical. Um, it's obviously at this part where decision making and planning, etc. starts becoming harder and more complicated. I just want to get one team fight where it's like, uh, hopefully we can see um, what he's trying to do. So the first thing is you're fishing for information against lower range champions, but since Syndra is kind of taking that space and zoning them, zoning her, uh, it's harder to do. Notice that as soon as um, as soon as Syndra stops taking space from from him, he starts taking space from lower range champions immediately. So you see Syndra starts giving the space back to him. He takes the space that Syndra doesn't control, right? So let's say Syndra EQ is like what this much range, right? Let's draw a circle, right? Something like this right now. As soon as Syndra leaves. Um, he's going to take the space and start zoning Jin. So he instantly starts. I don't know why, I don't know about popping the Spellbinder here, I'll be fair with you. But, um, you know, pop the Spellbinder to take space. The idea is there, right? He takes the space from the shorter range champion. He, he runs away from the Syndra because she's longer range and he starts taking space from shorter range champions. Syndra uses Q and he's fishing. You know, he's fishing, he's fishing, but he can't take, he can't run at Syndra. It's the only champion he can't just run at right now. Other than maybe Leona, but... Um, he's trying to. So, obviously, he has um, movement speed. So, if you have a Cosmic Drive, you'll actually have a similar amount of movement speed as he does right now. Um, I believe. Maybe a bit less. Maybe if you have free boots, I guess. If you have free boots, you could. But you see how he went from taking a lot of space uh, against champions that are shorter ranged than him and trying to walk into them to suddenly giving a ton of space because they marked Leona. See? He marks Leona and suddenly he has to be really careful because if he tries to walk into this choke area, he's going to get absolutely murdered by Leona, right? Leona can R him and then just murder him, basically. So... What does he do? He goes to Leona and tries to push him out, right? So, um, something to know. And obviously, he also has to consider where Kennen is, which obviously reveals himself here, which can be really scary. But like, like I said, the, that one's insane, you know what I mean? Like, there's, their, their positioning for this dragon is like, I mean, they won this world, so it feels a bit cringe to say world class, but better than world class. They were the best in the world at it. Um, but yeah, their, their general dragon setups and gameplay were just immaculate. So let's see when he hits the tower here, what he's doing and why. Walks up to the Jin, tries to take space. Uh, excellent use of um, Jin W, and then, you know, just boom, clocks. Cl I mean, Kindred Ult was a bit of a panic, but we'll, we'll respect it. You know, there are very good players. Sometimes scary things can happen. Either way, very good, very solid. Uh, solid stuff. But yeah. I mean, they were insane. Like, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think if Fnatic played against Damwon, anything would look much different this game. Maybe, maybe this guy, instead of being two one or two hundred twenty CS, this guy would be like two and five because he's trying to fight and fist fight, and probably this wouldn't be zero either. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that much. <laughs> Me and Illy, like, we wouldn't be playing like this. I'll tell you that much. We hated games like this. We fucking hated them. You know, like we would fist fight so much just to avoid the scenario of feeling hopeless. Just pick a fucking fight, man. Like that, that was our mindset, so I'll be fair with you. There will be some inting, no doubt. But, um, yeah. <sighs> the outcome's not... the same anyway. At least it f felt like the game was in our hands. So, one thing to note, Syndra stun gets used. Finally, okay? So, you notice, know, just keep in mind, Syndra hasn't fucking stunned anyone, right? The only time he stunned someone is when they walked into her. Or, like, someone was ready to follow up. It, the first time the stun comes out... Oh! Yo! This MySpace! Yeah, and not yeah. the website. He instantly starts walking up and starts investigating for what space he can take. Um, you know, again, stun is down. What does he do? Runs in a straight line at the enemy team. And then he realizes, oh, wait, what the fuck? My AD's dead. Like, literally. <laughs> um, so, like, the habit is stun goes out. Insta sprints at the enemy team. Look at him. And then the call gets made. Like, I'm fucked or whatever, right? And then he realizes, oh, shit, my team is dead. So they have to recall. But, again, I just want to go... I want to just mention, you know, 
the um, the habit there. When the Cinder Stone comes out, he walks up and tries to take space. And that's all I can really recommend you when you're playing solo queue and there's like a Hecarim ult. That's when you can start walking up. Sometimes you have to reply. Sometimes you can be the one taking space. Against Lady Carries, for example, you're very good at taking space. But against um, other control mages that have more range than you, that can be hard. So in the case you're wondering, Corky is a champion that is very well known for his really long range against the Zir. Everyone hates Corky Zir. Why? Because, um, yeah... Corky's poke is really unreliable in the sense of, like, max range, you're not going to fucking snipe people with rockets all that often, and, like, he needs level 16 to get there before, like, hitting rockets is actually going to be a big deal, which is why um, everyone hates Corky is here, because basically that matchup ends up in being a 13 minute or a 30 minute farm fest before Corky gets level 16 and three items, and then you're going to see this dance of taking space and back and forth, etc. But... Um, the same applies for Oriana versus Syndra, Victor versus Syndra, Victor versus Oriana, etc, etc. Like, the longer range mage will be the one that dictates how much action there is, because if you don't use your spell as the longer range mage, the shorter range mage cannot walk in. And Corky doesn't run out of spells, so Zir can never run into him, which is why everyone hates it, because nothing happens, because Corky just keeps <laughs> shooting fucking rockets, and nothing happens, because he's just sitting there... Lima, Oscar Lima, motherfucker, and just mm. it's great. spits out bullets, basically. It's it's amazing. I, uh, me personally, uh, have opinions about the the pro meta and how limiting it feels sometimes. But sure, yeah. I I don't know. I miss I miss the uh, I miss the old school days of being able to watch and like. Who do we got in the mid lane? Oh, Faker's on Zed against Akali? Yeah. Well, it is what it is, my friend. Yeah. Um, the point is, in your solo key games, you can play the fun champions and enjoy yourself. Um, and you can play some of these spicy champions just fine. Either way, like I mentioned, there's not much here, much more here to do. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for me. Um, okay. Uh, there's a channel on our Discord where you're going to be able to message and ask any questions, follow-up questions, etc. Obviously, if you want to, in, in a week or two, tell me how you're doing, that's great. But that's pretty much it. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, I think everything's been, like, super informative. Uh, I mean... I appreciate that. The the levels of mistakes are more egregious than I thought they were going to be. But, like, hey, that's good. I mean, it's a good and bad thing you know it's, it's bad because maybe it's bad only if you don't if you're not open-minded about it but i would say um just to recap for you what i want you to really focus on um is definitely like make a decision and stick to it yeah and then also try to focus on your champion mechanics in the sense of like understand when you're allowed to take space and when not so that you can reply accordingly because when lux was using me it, it didn't change the way you played and i really want when abilities start getting used you to start thinking about how you want to reply to that right so either you run at your opponent when they use abilities and then you reply uh, oh, sorry, they use abilities on you and you reply, or you run into your opponent, you use your abilities, and then you get out, right? And yeah. it's going to take some practice, trust me. You're going to play LeBlanc versus Oriana, and you're going to think you're Chovy, and you're going to try to be Chovy, and you're going to end up realizing you might not trade as well as he does, and the matchup looks a lot harder than it actually looked for him. <laughs> yeah, I've been there, you know, I've been there. So, um... Yeah, it's, it's, a learn it's a learning process. Exactly, yeah. so... That's what's going to be, you know, try to get as many games as you can. Um, again... This is going to be relevant for every mage. Swain is the same. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're playing Swain, I so say you play more Swain or Rihanna, but again, he's going to be the same. Uh, some matchups you're going to be fishing with E first and then backing off on its own cooldown. And some matchups you're going to have to wait for locks to use E and then you can walk up and fish for an E. So similar, this is for every single mage in the game. In fact, pretty much any champion that has a long range spell uh, to harass, um, depending on whether you're versus a longer range spell or short range spell, it's going to be the same thing. Zerath, for example, like he's obviously got two long range spells you have to worry about. Um... But it's going to be the same thing. All right. Yeah. I mean. Awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> Time to go grind some solo key, you know? I hope so. I hope you're motivated. You know, I, that's the number one thing. And I hope I was able to help you specifically with, with, with what, what something that can help you. Um, I really appreciate you obviously getting the coaching and thanks for joining me. I also appreciate you doing it on stream because, you know, not everyone is comfortable with that and I know it can be harder. So thanks a ton for that. Yeah, no problem. That's it going to be for me, guys. Uh, I'm going to read some questions from my Discord channel um, to talk about with the rest of the Twitch chat. So um, I'm going to sign off for now. Appreciate you helping. Have a good one. Yeah. See you, man. See you, man. Awesome sauce.